Hey, well, let's get going. I think we're live, right, crew? Uh, first, a quick shout out. Thanks, Anna and Sophie in the background. They're doing a tremendous job today running this event. And I think we're kicking it right off. So I'm waiting for an indication here on the screen that we're good to go, but I think we're rocking. AMZ Scout is hosting this super seller fest. Phenomenal. And I'm very excited to be the opening speaker here. And once I got confirmation that we're rocking, I'm going to share my screen and I got some good stuff for you guys today. Hang tight just a second. I'm going to wait for confirmation that we're rocking. Looks like we're good. So we're going to have a Q and a time, a few minutes after this presentation, I'm hoping this takes about under well under half an hour. And then I'm here to answer questions for you. Here we go. There's my screen. So I'm going to assume everything's good to go. Unless I get a message from the team that it's not, we're going to get rocking here. So what's the fastest, lowest risk way to launch and scale on Amazon. I'm going to talk to you today about something that you may not have heard of before. It's called the Amazon replens model. It's a model that we are super excited to present to our community. We've got over a thousand recent success stories with this model on Amazon, people from around the world. Uh, before I jump in though, just in case someone's just joining us, I wanna just give a sincere thanks to AMZ Scout putting on this event, the Super Seller Fest. To be the first speaker is a huge honor. Hope I don't mess anything up, guys. I think we're good to go. Let's jump through this presentation. I promise I'm not gonna read these slides to you, but as we go through it, um, there are some things I want to cover before we jump in just to kind of build some credibility. So since for about 20 years now, coming up on 20 years, I've sold millions of dollars of products and services online. That's been the only source of income for my family to this day, two of my teenagers, we've got five kids, my beautiful wife and I have five lovely children and we don't have time to dive into all of that. You know how to use Google, but two of my kids, my mom and my aunt work every day in the business I'm about to describe to you guys. When I'm contacted by an old friend, maybe an old family member that I haven't heard from in a while, uh, and they say, hey, I noticed that you're doing some cool stuff online. Can you teach me? This is the model I teach them. And keep in mind, we have people doing this at scale as well. I'm talking seven-figure businesses with incredible teams. So when I talk about the Amazon models, the possible models that you can dive into, I kind of put all the models into one of four buckets. And you've probably heard of the other three buckets, and I'm not going to talk about them today. I'm going to talk about replens. Again, that's this presentation is the easiest way to get started, scale at a low risk strat with a low risk strategy. So you've heard of RA and OA. That's at the bottom here. And oh, awesome. I'm hearing from the team that everything's awesome. That's great. Just got an update. So you guys can hear me. Beautiful. Okay, so RA and OA are retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, scanning barcodes, looking for clearance items. We've all heard of those. That's not what we're talking about today. It's different than that. I'll show you how in a minute. You've heard of wholesaling. You've heard of private label as well. And I would say about 95% of the content on YouTube right now, for example, if you went and said, hey, I want to learn how to sell on Amazon. It's all in the private label arena or it's in the wholesale arena. Very few people are talking about the replens model. This is going to be new information for most of you today. And I'm super excited about it. A quick plug for my podcast at silentgym.com. I spend a lot more time than the half hour we're going to have together today interviewing people who do this model very successfully from home around the world, free podcast. Just want to make you aware of it. There's a little note at the bottom of the screen. Silentgym.com is the only link you'll need for that. But let's jump in. What is a replen? That's one of the great questions that that Anna asked me yesterday when we were kind of going over this presentation a little bit, like, you know what, I better create a slide and explain it very, very specifically what it is. It's any item. It can be anything. It could be a hammer. It could be a food item. It could be anything that you see being sold on Amazon that you can go easily source retail, either online or going to an actual retail store, which I'll tell you why I really like that strategy. And we're not scanning barcodes when we get to the store, we're doing something very different. But you can predictably, profitably sell that product at a nice pace month after month after month. We have over a thousand replens that we sell. Some of them sell a few a day. 
Some of them sell a few a month, but they're easily sourced. I can go get more anytime I want to, excuse me. And we teach our students how to find hundreds of these items very, very quickly. That's the strategy we teach. I'm going to cover the basics of that today, give you enough that you could go see that this actually works is my goal today. And again, another quick plug podcast, write down silentgym.com if you want to hear a bunch more about this. But here's one of the reasons I'm very excited about replens right now. If you haven't noticed, the world is a little crazy right now, thanks to some virus I don't know much about. But shipping ports around the world, especially in the United States right now, are really clogged up. So if you're waiting on some product from overseas, you're trying to ship product from point A to point B, we're at historic levels of backlogged challenges. So that's wholesale, that's private label. It takes a long time. I'm not against those models. Maybe I should say that here. We have students, one of my students has a top five grocery item on Amazon right now. Top five grocery item. That's one of our students. It's a private label product. Yes, we understand private label. We do the game very, very well. But when I'm talking to someone who hasn't made a lot of money yet, or they're new, that's who I'm going to address today. Or you're looking for another kind of foundational income source on Amazon. This is where you should be. The replens model. Here's one of the reasons. I'm just going to show you a few. I could give you about 20 reasons why I love replens. I'm going to give you a couple big ones that you might not have heard before. Shipping around the world is tied up. So who has the advantage in this situation? I think Walmart has a bigger advantage than you do getting stuff from point A to point B. What that means is the big retail shelves, they're struggling less than in the rest of us are to get our products right now. And this is where you go to source replens. You don't have to actually go do it yourself. Remember, I said we have people around the world doing this. I'll give you the example. Joseph is one of our students. He's actually become a coach for us recently. He lives in Slovakia. They have no Amazon presence in Slovakia. He buys and sells products off shelves like the one you see right here in the United States. He never touches them. He never shops for them. He doesn't prep them. He doesn't do any of the handling, the box tape. He doesn't do any of that. He lets his team do that. He uses a prep center. This is one of the things we teach you to do. Find a prep partner in the United States. Find shoppers in the United States who can go buy the products, send them into Amazon. You never see or touch them. That's the replens model. We've taught a bunch of people how to do this. You're not scanning barcodes. You're not looking for clearance items. You're looking for everyday items. And let's just use, I grabbed a random picture of a retail store aisle. In this aisle, I guarantee you are dozens, if not hundreds of potential phenomenal replens where you can spend five or $10. You're going to sell the item for 25 or 30 as maybe one pack or maybe a multi-pack, two or three pack. These are existing ASINs already on Amazon, and you're just going to sell on those listings in those places where the demand isn't keeping up with the supply. So if that's a new, a new thing to you, hang with me, and I think you're going to really enjoy what we're going to go through. Here, here's a, why I think replans are a big deal right now. Again, the easily sourced inventory, zero competition worries. And what I say, you know, when I talk to wholesale sellers on Amazon or, or private label sellers on Amazon, You've got other people coming after your golden goose all the time. Like these are my handful of products that are really doing good for me. I hope no one else comes in and competes with me and gets more reviews than I do or, or out markets me. You don't have to worry about that with the replens model because you're going after everyday, easily sourced, pull it right off the shelf at everyday common stores. I've mentioned Walmart already. I could give you a list of 50 other common stores in the United States Every retail store in the United States has potential great replen products on the shelves. We love those local regional type stores too, or maybe there's only 10, 20, 30 stores in the whole U.S. and it's located in one certain region of the U.S. Those are everywhere. A great place to find replens. So you don't worry about your competition because you can easily go find dozens more products anytime you need to. If the price goes down on one of your, one of your favorite replens, that's okay. You go find some more products. So that's the game, constantly finding more products, which is easily done. Stop selling the products that aren't profitable if the price starts to drop, which does happen. But in many cases, we have students who will find dozens and dozens of replens very quickly. A year later, well over half of those are still selling very well consistently week after week, month after month on Amazon to the tune of multiple seven-figure businesses in many cases. One of our coaches, he lives in Florida. 
his entire team works from home. He's got stay home moms who do the shopping and the sourcing and the prepping. And he's got virtual assistants who find the replans online by sourcing using some of the strategies I'm going to show you today. His whole team operates virtually and he's got a multiple seven figure business, no inventory in his house. He's not got a bunch of tape and boxes in some corner in his bedrooms anywhere. It's all run with this virtual team. It's a beautiful model. So you don't have to be constantly hunting for that next big winner product. You're just finding $5 products, $10 products. And some of my replans are up in the 150 to $200 range, actually. And we're making 50 to $70 every time we sell one, but they're easily sourced off retail shelves. I could get in my car right over there right now, drive to the store, grab a couple more. If I needed, we're just waiting on that next one to sell that particular product I have in my mind. It sells one or two a week. So we keep five or six on hand and go get more when we need to. It's an easy model. And here's one of the reasons this model works. This isn't on my bullet point here, but I just want to point out something that's not obvious. The world has changed. The way people shop online has changed. A lot more people are shopping only online now. They're not going back to their old in-store habits. So you're just providing the convenience of taking products from retail store shelves. And you don't have to be the one that does it, but this is the business model. Take it from the shelf, put it on Amazon shelf. It just became worth a lot more money. And there are literally hundreds of thousands of products that meet the criteria. It's not, it's not such low hanging fruit that you can just go grab everything off the shelf. I mean, those days may come and just send in anything and it's going to sell for a profit. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying once you know how to check and see what it is you're dealing with, how to use a couple of simple tools, you can find dozens per day. The people who are good at finding replants can find dozens per day easily. Okay, so it's easily automated. Like I've already pointed out, you can hire shoppers and preppers. You don't have to be the one doing the footwork if you don't want to. I kind of enjoy it personally, but I don't do it. We've got a team of about six shoppers who run our operation. The most stable model I've seen, I've been doing internet marketing for 20 years. I've had multiple streams of income. I've had best-selling books. I've got a podcast. I've got a coaching program, courses. We sell physical product on Amazon. The easiest model I've ever seen that's reliable, scalable, stable is the replens model. Many huge sellers in our community, again, doing seven figures are using just this model. They live all over the world. United States is the hottest market to do this in, regardless of where you live. Then you've got Canada, which is on fire. Some of our Canadians are just doing phenomenal right now. But again, it doesn't matter where you live. I'm going to stop plugging my podcast. I'm not going to mention that again. <laughs> There's a little note at the bottom. You're catching on, I hope. Okay, so what's my qualification? Real quick to slide through this. I mean, I'm honored that... AMZ Scout and Anna, they invited me today. Huge honor, but I just want to let you know who it is you're dealing with right now. We've got 7,000 coaching students over the past several years for our Amazon selling strategies. Very happy students, many of them wildly successful in all of the selling models that we showed at the beginning, private label, wholesale. Replens is where we start most sellers though. And that's what we're talking about today. We've got a 67,000 member Facebook group. You can find the link at silentgym.com completely free. That's where all of our coaching students hang out. I love the transparency. I'm not sure where you're learning your Amazon education at, but are you hanging out with a group of other sellers who are doing big things in a completely free environment? That's what our group is. Go check it out. The course that we've had for over 10 years, provenamazoncourse.com has helped tens of thousands of people launch Amazon businesses. Dozens of recent success stories are on our podcast. That's the last time I'll mention it, hopefully. So you can hear me interviewing people who have gone through our program, who are doing big things. I love the podcast format because it's actual real people who are doing the business every day, how they've succeeded, what challenges they've hit. It's our students being interviewed by me most of the time. That's most of our episodes. I think you'll really enjoy it. Okay, so I want to talk to you about a tool called Keepa, and this is the first scary graphic screen with some real data on it, but I want to take some of the intimidation out. We're going to talk about AMZ Scout here as well in just a moment, but I wanted to talk to you about Keepa. I'm going to check in with the team real quick, make sure everything's good. Yep. All right. Hit me, Sophie, if, I'm, if anything's uh, off here, but I think we're doing good. I like the pace we're moving at here. If I'm talking fast, that's okay. You're going to get the recording. So listen fast or just slow it down and listen later if I'm going too fast for you. But there's a lot to cover at a very little, very little time here. So Keepa happens to be my favorite tool. AMZ Scout does a lot of the things that it does as well as I'm learning and I'm 
super excited to dive into that in just a minute. But what does Keepa do? Well, Keepa does a good job of tracking product rank on Amazon. If you think of a number one rank as the lowest point, like that's as low as you can get as the number one. And let's say a rank of 5 million is a high point. So when we say a rank drop, that's actually a good thing because you're closer to being number one, right? So what you see here in this top graph is this green line that's bouncing up and down. This is one of my actual products. It sells between five and 10 units every single day. We make between five and $8 per sale every single day around the clock every month. It's been like this for quite a while now. Easy to find product. Anyone who has the store that we have near us, which there's about 150 in the United States, could walk in and grab this product right now and sell with us. There's about 25 other sellers that sell this product right alongside us all day, every day. And we're fine with that. But this green line, this is a Keepa chart now. Keepa is a Amazon data collection company. We talk a lot about it on episode 369 of our podcast. So I'm not going to hit everything there is to know here, but if you want more, you can go there. There's all kinds of features you can turn on with Keepa. Whether you see a little colored dot, that's a feature we've got turned on on the graph. Where there's a line, we just don't need it because you could fill this up with more data than you want to look at. But I want to make this go from looking scary and intimidating to very simple. So let's talk about the four colors that you see here. The green line is rank. It's bumping up and down, up and down. What do we know? Every time the rank drops, say here's a drop. It was here and then it dropped and it was here and then it dropped. What do we know happened? We know at least one sale was made at least one sale. That's why I like Keepa. They really do a good job of tracking the product rank for millions of products. Every time the, the product rank drops, that means one or more could have been many sales because it could have been a couple hours since they checked in. Maybe multiple sales were made, but when the rank drops, at least one sale occurred. That tells us that we can get an approximation of how many times per month these products are selling, which if you didn't know, no tool out there except Amazon itself knows exactly how many times per month any given product is selling. Unless it's your product that you're selling, no one has any idea. A lot of the tools use algorithms and they guess, well, the most accurate way to guess from my vantage point, having done this a while, is to track the product rank, see how many drops, how many times the rank drops per month. So that's this line. And I'll tell you more about it in just a minute. This orange line is the approximate price. So this product we buy for about five bucks. You can see over here, the orange line is based on over here. You got about 20, 25 bucks a sale. We're making five, seven bucks a sale. I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but Amazon likes to keep their piece. We get our piece. We've got the product costs, of course. So down here, we've got two lines turned on. We've got blue and green. And I say this because when you jump into Keepa, these are the things you want to turn on. If you turn on all these features, if you ever do use Keepa, it's very inexpensive, by the way. I am not getting paid to say this. It's just a tool I love and use. I don't, I don't do endorsements based on who's paying me or if I get an affiliate commission. I think in total over the years, I probably referred Keepa maybe 8,000 users and have been paid less than $200 for it. And I'm fine with that because if a better tool comes along, that's the one I'll talk about for this particular purpose. Now you can see this green line. That's the number of reviews, the scale over here. You can see the scale going up from 400 to 520. And we basically estimate for every one review, that means 50 to hundred units have sold. So you can see this green line climbing upwards to the right. That's good. That means this product's moving. It's selling well. That's another indicator for us that it's going. And then this blue line is nice. It shows you how many sellers at any given time are on this product. And I said more than there actually are. There's six of us right now selling this product, according to this graph as of today, as of the day I grabbed it anyway. So why is all this information important? Well, it helps you decide, is this a good replant or not? Is this a product that I could take a stab at selling? I could buy it for five bucks. Selling for 20 to 25 pretty steadily here. It's moving along. Here's one of the other things that I like to look for is, there we go, the number of drops. In Keepa, this is the same page, but there's a new box that popped up. You can ignore everything in this box except the little red circle here, 54 drops per month. One of the things that AMZ Scout does a great job of is estimating how many sales per month. Like I said, they have their own algorithm. But when I'm using Keepa, this tells me exactly how many drops happened in any given month. Typically, if it's more than 15 or 20 drops, you can safely multiply that number by anywhere from five to 10 times the number to get the actual number of sales per month. So in this case, this could mean up to 500 sales. And because we've been on this product for a while, that's pretty close to accurate. 
500 or more sales per month is about right. Now, remember, we're sharing those sales with five or six other sellers, but that's fine. We're all getting paid well to do it. Here's where you see this data. You click on the statistics on Keepa. It brings up this little this page. The only number I ever look at is the number of drops per month. I don't care what it's ranked. I'm just looking at the number of drops per month. And we'll have questions at the end here. We're not going to dive off into the weeds too much. This is the kind of stuff that we teach in the course that we're going to give you guys today. All right. So hang tight. If this is interesting, we got some more good stuff for you. Now, using AMZ Scout to find replants, this is something I'm learning in real time. Anna and I spent some time over the weekend for you guys hammering down on this. I love the way you can go into their data and you can say, and here's, here's an actual search that I did and found some good potential winners. You can put in a brand name. I suggest you put in a common brand name. It could be anything you've heard of. In this case, I just grabbed Heinz, which is a ketchup brand, mustard condiment brand in the US. Any popular brand name. And price range, 15 to $45. That's the final selling price point. Typically, I don't like to find replans under $15. They can kind of be a waste of time once Amazon takes their fees and you've paid for shipping it into Amazon and all that. It's hard to make money. Although a lot of people swear by these very inexpensive items, like less than a dollar items that are selling for $12, $13, $14, $14, multiple per day. It really adds up fast, but just as a general rule, there's nothing set in stone about the settings I grabbed here. I just kind of filled in a few areas to show how I would use AMZ Scout to find a page of products that might be winners that I would then go in and analyze or maybe test. And when I say test, I'm going to test two or three units. If it's a three pack of ketchup, for example, that I know I can buy for about two or three dollars a bottle and it's selling for twenty eight dollars for a three pack. Well, I might go buy six bottles that creates two, three packs and see how it does. If it doesn't do well, I drop the price, sell them for about what I paid and I move on without having lost any money. It's a beautiful model, but here's how I would fill out AMZ Scout. And again, nothing set in stone here, but one of the things I'll point out with the reviews, a lot of our best replans are products that haven't seen a whole lot of attention at the point that you've got like 50 people selling the product. A lot of times that means the price is going to start tanking if it hasn't already. So I like to look for things that have zero to 500 reviews. That's a good place to play. You're going to find a lot of potential winners that way. And the number of sellers, I'm not afraid of seeing a whole bunch of other sellers on a product, but I do like to see more than one or two typically, especially if you're new, because if there's just one seller, a lot of times that means it's the manufacturer or it's a private label product. So, you know, set this to two or three here. Set this up to about, you know, 20, 25 on some of our products. There's 50 or 60 other sellers and we're all making money all day, every day. And I'm fine with that. Those are a little harder to find typically, because like I said, once you got a bunch of sellers, someone's going to start the race to the bottom and it could end up price tanking on you because we're all paying full retail price here. Now we use credit cards with points on them and we'll take advantage of, you know, customer reward programs that save you 4% on every purchase. You know, that stuff adds up over time. And, and I fly free anytime I need to fly because we're buying everything on my personal airlines credit card. Right. But, uh, and we're doing great on time. This is good. Just check the clock, but this is a search I might do. It would bring up a list of products and that would be a great starting point to try to find some replans. And you will be shocked just using your eyeball in a rough estimate. You'll be shocked how many products you'll see pop up where the example I just used two bottles of ketchup, you know, it's two or three bucks at the store. You could go easily Google search right now and find out exactly what it does cost, but it's selling for five times the combined amount on Amazon. And why is that? Why do people, why are people willing to pay that much more for the convenience? Remember in the U S a lot of people use their prime now. Like I wanted an hour from now on my front porch. I don't care what it costs. They drop it in their cart and they buy it. There's a lot of people shopping that way right now. Millions of them are actually, and we have the evidence and how many people are running very successful replans businesses right now. So many students in our community use just this model. So as we start to wind this down and get into the Q and a section of our program today, hopefully I've piqued your interest. I've given you some good resources. Here's something we've never done before. This is the best replens training out there. We're giving it to you. Now, if you've never sold on Amazon before, it's not going to take you as far as you want to go. Or maybe you're experienced and you want to really kind of get into the weeds on the replen training, learn some insider secrets. 
Of course, there's always more here, but this course stands by itself and sells every day for $300. We're giving it to you guys. I was honored to be asked to be the first presenter today. It's amazon101course.com. They asked me to come up with a really good bonus, something we've never done before, twisted my arm. We've never given this away before. We've put it on sale, but never for free. And you guys are getting it as participants in the Seller Fest completely free. So they're going to have a code for you as part of the bonus codes that you're going to get. This is going to be one you really want to take advantage of. We're going to dive in a little bit more on some of the things I talked about and get you excited about this replans model. This is where we start 90% of our students. Okay. If someone comes to us and they say, Hey, I want to learn how to make money online. What do you got for me? 90% of the time, this is where we start them. Not with blogging, not with drop shipping, not with Shopify, not with doing a podcast, not with writing a book, not with, you know, whatever all those other models are out there that people use to make money. This is the one where we predictably know if you do what we're telling you to do, you can start putting money in the bank, very low risk, like we promised at the beginning, and it can scale quickly. That's why we love this model. So let me see. I'm going to bump here, see if I got anything else we need to cover. There we go. Yeah, we're on the, we're on the last page resource list and Q and a time. So just, these are just some resources for you. This is all free resources, except our proven Amazon course. Again, that's our flagship course. I'm not going to spend a lot of time pushing that, but it can, but it does include all of our replens training, everything you'd ever need to know. This is the course that our replen students, thousands of them have used and our free podcast, uh, free Facebook group. And with that, I'm going to ask our panelists, I, I wanted to end it just a couple minutes early and get some good Q&A time because maybe I flew past something here that we need to hit. And I'm going to see if we got any questions bouncing in yet. If not, I can certainly go back and clarify anything that the panelists want me to hit as well. It'd be my honor to do so. I do see some chat questions popping in here while I'm waiting to hear from the team. Here's a question. What is important to know before starting FBA? I'll just start there. That was one of the questions that popped into the chat. What things do I need to know before I start FBA? Well, all businesses are work. I just recorded a podcast episode a couple of days ago about this topic. This is a simple business model. That doesn't mean it's easy. There's no such thing as an easy business. All business requires work. So there's going to be things to learn here. You're going to bump your head. You're going to stub your toe. You're going to have questions. You're not going to know what question you should be asking, which is why we have a phenomenal coaching program, by the way. People who work with you one-on-one, -on -one, successful students working with you. So you're asking the right questions at the right time. But what do you need to know before you get into this business? As with all businesses, there's going to be a lot of work. The thing I love about this one, though, is you can keep your wallet in your pocket at no point. And this is what I love when I contrast selling FBA replans model that we've talked about today. At no point are you writing a big check and hoping it all works out later. At no point are you sliding a bunch of money onto the table and saying, man, I really hope this works out someday for me. Like with private label, you got to order your product and then wait months and then the marketing expenses. We don't have any paid ad expenses with the replans model. We're selling products that are flying off the shelf at a profit. It's just a matter of going and finding the right ASINs. It's not even necessarily a hunt for the right products. It's a hunt for the right ASINs. Because maybe that ketchup that we talked about earlier, as a single bottle, it, it's worthless. Amazon's selling it for $2, same as the store. You can't make money selling against Amazon on that product. But as a two-pack or three-pack, wow, there's some serious margin there. And people aren't doing math while they're shopping. A whole bunch of them are just throwing it in the cart and buying it. Huge profit potential there. All right, so I'm, I'm scrolling through. Uh, the team, if you could ping me on uh, WhatsApp, if there's anything I'm missing here, but I'm looking for more questions. Happy to have someone jump on with the audio as well if I'm missing anything. Uh, how often do you encounter price tanking by other sellers, Samuel asked. Great question. You know, I don't consider it price tanking. I consider it the market adjusting to whatever someone's willing to sell it for, and I don't concern myself with it. Any given time, we could easily go out and find 15 or 20 more replens. Odds are six months from now, around half of those will probably have taken a price hit from one vantage point or another. Someone else hops on it. Someone else doesn't know what they're doing, or they've got a better source than us. So they're trying to liquidate. Because remember with replens, 
the worst case scenario is you just decide to get your money back. Maybe you overbought, you bought 40 units when you shouldn't have bought that many. And so you're like, ah, I'm going to, I think I'm going to get my money back out of this, drop the price a little bit, get the money back and go buy something more exciting. So if someone's doing that on one of the ASINs we're sitting on, yeah, you're going to see some price fluctuations, but on so many of these products, there's so much opportunity out there. They could sit for months or years and be great sellers for you. So we don't worry about price tanking because we just go find more replens if we need to, but it does happen. Prices go up and down all the time. Uh, can you get your account back from a suspension due to IP complaints? It, okay. I love this question. And I've actually got full podcast episodes dedicated to the question of price or sorry, of account suspensions for over 10 years. We've been teaching Amazon sellers how to sell on Amazon, teaching all of the strategies that you just saw listed at the beginning of this program, thousands of students, hundreds of recent success stories. I've heard less than five stories of permanent suspensions where we couldn't get the person's account back not just IP complaints, any of them, any of the reasons. There's people in our team. There's people out there who are good at getting account reinstatements, getting your account back. I've met with the people at Amazon. I was invited out to Amazon headquarters because we've trained so many sellers. I've met with them, the people that turn off Amazon accounts for a living, the people that suspend accounts. They've told me to my face, I believe them. I've seen the evidence and data. They're not out to get the good guys. They're out to get the thousands and thousands of daily in flooding fake accounts, selling fake product. The people that say they've got 500 TVs for sale, merchant fulfill, and turns out they didn't have any inventory. The drop shippers that run out of stock and sell 150 sales in a day and there's no inventory to back it up. Those are the guys that they're taking down permanently. The good guys, if they make a mistake, there are ways to get your account turned back on. We're very good at it. We have great people at it. I've heard less than five of the thousands of students, fewer than five permanent suspensions where I was kind of scratching my head and saying, I, that doesn't make, why wouldn't Amazon let these guys back? And in two or three of those cases, had they persisted, I'm convinced we could have, but they just kind of gave up a few weeks in and said, oh, I'm going to move on and do something else. So it's not an issue in my world with thousands of sellers. It's just not. So don't be too concerned about that issue. As long as you play by the rules, contact a pro if and when those things do happen where you're temporarily suspended. Uh, are there brands that you can't sell? Great question. Uh, I think that says Gina. I've got small font on my chat here. Sorry. You said, are there brands that you can't sell? Absolutely. Part of the training you go through is recognizing brands that you can and can't sell. Amazon will sometimes say, Hey, you can't sell that yet. Got to request approval on the seller app. Quite often I'll be in the store look at an item and it says, up, oh, you got to request approval for that item. And I'll click on request approval. And it says, Hey, congratulations. You've been approved. <laughs> it's that easy. Once you've got a little momentum, 90% of the time, it's just a button click request approval right in the store. And sometimes those products sell before I get to the checkout register. If we're selling the merchant fulfill, which I'm not going to dive into right now, but that means we're doing the shipping. We list it for sale right on the spot. It's selling before we check out of the store. If it's a truly hot item. That happens frequently in Q4, actually. Uh, do you need capital to start? No, you really don't. We, some of our best success stories on our podcast are people who started off with a couple hundred dollars in the bank. Literally, one of the very recent podcast episode, guy had, had $500. That's all he ever put into this business. That included his training. That included inventory. That included our proven Amazon course. Everything. 500 bucks is all he had. He's got a phenomenal thriving business now, about a year later, stories like that all over the place. That's why I love this model is it's such a low risk, easier way into the business. You're not giving anybody a $20,000 payment and hoping it works out six months from now. We don't do that. We grad, we, we, what we say around here is we're going to help you put money in the bank as you learn to sell on Amazon. So you can grow into those other models, wholesale, private label, grow into that organically later. You don't start there. So no, you don't need a lot of capital. Uh, do you recommend, recommend repackaging a questions popping in from Stephanie? Multi-packs are selling it. You know, that's diving into the weeds a little more than we're going to do here. Um, I'm not, I can't hit that one. Sorry, just not enough time because I want to be respectful and hit as many of these as I can. We've got about eight more minutes here, it looks like. IP complaints, what's important to know before starting. And if the team wants to text me anything that I'm missing, 
please let me know. Someone said the code isn't working on the checkout website. We checked it this morning. The code was working great. The support email is on your screen right now. If you have trouble with that code, we're happy to help you or the good folks at AMZ Scout will as well. We'll definitely get you taken care of. You can't find the discount code. AMZ Scout's going to give that to you. Okay. That's part of the package here. I'm not sure at what point they're giving you all your goodies, but that goodie is coming. And proven Amazon course is available right now. You get all of it day one, including the Amazon 101 course, just as a little shout out to the great team. We've got dozens of people that contribute and work on that course all day, every day. How do you get ungated for replin products? Ungating is not as big of an issue as you've been led to believe it is. You start off selling the stuff you're allowed to sell. There are millions of products right now, even if you signed up for Amazon this morning, that you are eligible to sell. You start selling them. Even if some of them are break-even products, get some momentum. We like to tell people, hey, go sell some pencils, right? Go spend two bucks, sell them for three bucks, lose a quarter of sale, learn the system. Get a few hundred sales under your belt. You're going to, uh, ungating just rolls in automatically. And you just go try and stuff you were gated on yesterday. You're not gated on now. It happens very organically. So don't pay someone to help you get ungated. Don't use an ungating service or black hat strategy. Just sell some products. Even if you're selling a few products at break even, learn the system. You're going to ramp up very quickly and be ungated in all the good categories. They're all good. There's no such thing as a bad category on Amazon. Amazon shopping is on fire. Keep in mind, guys, in the US, online retail, half of all transactions happening all day, every day are on Amazon. eBay and all the other sites share the other half. Amazon is one half. Everybody else shares the other half. Amazon is on fire and there's popular products selling at great margins in every category. So don't get too worked up about ungating. It happens organically over time within just a few weeks for most sellers. If you get some momentum and start selling some products, you're going to see it happening. I'm scrolling, looking for questions. All right, I'm going to scroll all the way back to the bottom. Replens looks like retail arbitrage. I don't see the difference. Explain the difference. Great question. Possibly my favorite question, Mr. Mansu. Okay, so what's the difference between RA and replens? Retail arbitrage to me is when I go in the store and I'm scanning barcodes and I'm hoping to find something that looks like a winner. I go through the clearance aisle, maybe of Walmart. And yeah, there's some stuff there. There's people that make about $100,000 a year doing what we call retail arbitrage, scanning barcodes one at a time, looking for deals. It's the equivalent of going to yard sales, looking for eBay finds. You can make $100,000 to $150,000 a year if you're decent and you hustle at that model. Great model, nothing against it. I enjoy it myself. I like whipping out my phone and scanning a few barcodes. Why not? But replans is boring. There's no exciting adventure. There's no coming back empty handed. You send your shoppers out. My shoppers go out with a spreadsheet that we all share. It's a shared Google sheet. And they know that we need four of this boring item. We need three of that boring item. We need six of this boring item. And you go through the store and you flop it in the cart because we know it's selling predictably and profitably consistently, right? So RA is a treasure hunt, retail arbitrage, online arbitrage. That's more of a treasure hunt model. If it's something that sells consistently at a profit, that's a replin because it's replenishing our inventory is the only necessary part of the business model. So hopefully that answers your great question. I really appreciate you asking me that. Looking through for questions, briefly discuss prep centers. Great question. What is a prep center? Kenny, you guys are setting me up with some softballs. Thank you. This is good. What is a prep center? Prep center could be simply a friend that you have in the United States and you say, hey, I'm going to order some things online in the U.S., have them shipped to your house. Would you put them in a box, put some tape on the box and send it to Amazon for me for $15 an hour? Yeah, sure. I'll do that. So you have someone, maybe it's an individual, or we have a free list, a resource that we put in our course of all the prep centers that we know of across the United States. You can have your product delivered to any of them. We have a prep center at our own office. My Two of my teenagers work there most days, every day of the week, helping prep products for other sellers. So prep center simply puts the product in a box and puts your label on it. So when it gets to Amazon, Amazon knows who the product belongs to. And when they sell it, they know who to pay. That's what a prep center does. This is how you do the business without having to see or touch your inventory. We work with wholesalers, private label sellers. The prep center network is a valuable resource. It's completely free. It's, it's just a community service that we provide a list of prep centers. And some people start businesses. 
all over the world, they're starting these businesses where they'll handle your inventory for you and you pay them to basically do that, to, to prep the product, to send it into Amazon. Or if you're doing merchant fulfill, they'll ship it for you as units sell. So either Amazon selling it or you're selling it yourself. And I just got my five minute warning from the lovely Sophie. So I saw that I'm taking, I'll, I'll be sure and uh, tap out when it's time. Looking for the good questions here. Nothing is free. Not even this video. <laughs> well, I would argue, man, that, hey, I, you know, I understand being skeptical. Uh, we put a lot of time, effort, and energy into the free stuff we offer, as does AMZ Scout. This actually is a free event. And our podcast coming up on 400 episodes is completely free. I had someone come up to me in an event. It's been a few months ago. Said they wanted to shake my hand. And they said, I'm a little embarrassed to say this, but I got to tell you something. And I said, you know, what? He said, I've never paid you a dime. I've been in your community for years. All I've done is consume the free content. I've built an outstanding business. It's changed my life and my family's life forever, but I've never paid you. And I feel kind of bad about that. And I said, I love that testimonial. If my free stuff is that good, imagine how good our paid stuff is. That's a great story. I'm going to tell a whole bunch of people like I'm telling you now. So if you're listening to the right people, yeah, there's a lot of great free content out there. But just be leery of those people that say, hey, here's the free stuff. Now it's time to pay us $8,000, $10,000, $15,000. If you're a new seller, if you're new to the world of making money online, the biggest favor I can tell you right now is make money as you learn. Don't write big checks. Don't spend a bunch of money on your education. Make money as you learn. If you've noticed, our course is $29 per month and we'll give you a refund if you don't love it. That's how confident we are in what we do and what we teach. So hang out in our free community. Find other great YouTube leaders, people who speak with passion, who have a success trail. One of the things I always say, here's the bar you should be looking for. And as we wrap this up, this might be a good place. I, I did a whole podcast episode on this topic. I, I feel like I threw down the gauntlet on the whole industry. You call yourself an expert. You call yourself a guru. You say you're someone that can teach people to make money online. I got one question for you. And this is the question you should be asking yourself of the people you listen to. Where is that community of successful people that I can go hang out with who've been listening to what you teach and who are succeeding wildly and they're ready to share the ideas with me? Where do those people hang out? I want to be a part of that group for a few days, a few weeks, a few months. I want to be a part of that group without paying a dime to anybody. Where do they hang out? Your successful students. If they can't answer that question, run. We've got that answer. That's our free Facebook group, 67,000 people from around the world all day, every day, hanging out, transparently talking about our coaching program, our courses, jump in there, have conversations with the real people who've been on our podcast. So yeah, maybe you say nothing's free. We like to pay our coaches well for their time. When you're ready for coaching, we do have to pay to maintain our course and the people who create the content, the support team, but we're not getting rich off of creating content. We're selling products online, teaching other people how to do it too. All of our coaches are formerly successful students who have bought our program at one point, grown incredible businesses, and now they take on a handful of students at a time and teach them to do the same. So what is the promo code for the Amazon 101 course? We've hit that a couple of times. You're going to get all that from AMZ Scout. I think it's at towards the end of this whole thing. You'll get it in the email. Um, scrolling through, seeing if there's one last question in the final minute. It says, thanks for your time. Getting ready to send in your first arbitrage shipment. Awesome, Kenny. Way to go. Be sure and jump in to our free Facebook group. You'll get a lot of free support in there. People who are new to Amazon, you'll love hanging out in that group. And if anyone else wants to give a shout out to our tremendous hosts, AMZ Scout, love you guys. It was truly an honor to spend some time with you today. Sophie, Anna, you guys are killing it. I hope that all the other speakers come and bring it because I can't wait to hang out and learn lots of good things from them as well. God bless you. I call you a business building warrior out there, all of you. God bless your business. I hope you can uh, come check out our podcast. That's the last thing I'll end with. And I'll turn it back over to the team, see what they got next. Thanks all. Yeah. Awesome. And I think we are starting straight up here. Um, but some great words from Jim. I hope everyone can hear me. Let me know in the chat box if you can. You can see it here. Excellent. Great. So 
Hi everyone, my name is Dan Rogers. If you have not met me before or, or seen me online, but today I have the honor of dealing with the crux of our business, which is finding products and product research. Have a lot to get through, so I'm going to move quite quickly. Uh, I hope that's okay, but I think you're going to get a lot of value from this. And then keep your questions because we do have a 20 minute Q&A at the end. But I'm going to jump straight in and move quite quickly. But to give you a quick synopsis is that we're going to deal with how are we adapting product research criteria and what we're looking for as we move, move into 2022, as things get more competitive as they do each year, and as shipping rates are at their astronomical levels. How do we adapt criteria, find the right products and stay profitable? So let me share my screen with you here. And we will begin. One second, sorry, here. I'll just share my full screen. But let me know if you guys can see this okay. Do you see product goals? Just let me know quickly in the chat box and we can begin. Okay, perfect. Let's do it. I don't wanna be presenting without you being able to see it. So we're gonna start off right here. And this is really exactly what we're, we're looking for here is, I wanna make sure this is not in the way here with you either. And this should be fine like this. But where we start off is really with our product goals here. And we're looking for a price minimum of $35. So that's our minimum sell price here. And in sales, we're looking for 20 sales per day or 600 sales per month. Those are the pretty much the same, but just at different time scales. And you're going to see why this is important. If we look at what that translates into, that's going to translate into a revenue of 21,000 per month. That's 6,300 profit. Weekly, that's 5,250 with 1,500 profit. And daily, 700 revenue to 10 profit. So that's what it could break down to. Of course, there are variables with PPC, et cetera. But this is what we're looking for. And we're going to be quite strict with this. I'm moving on to the next stage here we are looking at the three prongs of any product. And when you're looking at a high potential product, you wanna have a high sell price, development potential, and an acceptance of low reviews. And I quickly wanna break down why. The first is with your sell price. Now, if you have the higher sell price, you're, you're gonna have higher profitability. And the way you wanna think of this is, pretend you have two pairs of headphones and one of the pairs of headphones sell at $18 and the other at $48, but they're the same size product. So you're gonna leverage things like FBA fees because the FBA fees are gonna be the same, even though the one sells for $48. And it's the same when you look at international shipping. So you're leveraging the fixed costs in the business. And then secondly, less competition because obviously so many sellers look at $25 products or they feel like they can't or don't have the budget to do the higher end, the more premium products. So you're thinning out your competition as well. With development potential, this is absolutely critical. And I do see this often where a seller will choose a product because it matches all the criteria except this one, except development potential. And that's going to cause big problems in the future. Of course, this is your ability to build out that product differently, to differentiate, add more value. That's what you're looking to do here. That's going to allow you to stand out, whether it's on your main image, but from all of the results. And this is really the crux within the crux. This is what you need to develop. It's also going to make your product much harder to copy. And we're going to look at specific examples 
of how to find high development potential as well. Lastly, your acceptance of low reviews. Here, of course, you're looking at a higher ease of entry. And I'm gonna show you specific examples of evaluating this for your markets. It's also gonna give you reduced risk and boost that initial sales or your initial set of sales because you can see low review offers are already selling well here. So we'll look into this, but these are your three prongs overall, high sell price, development potential, and your acceptance of low reviews. And I just wanna make sure this is not in your way. Should be okay. So if we translate what we've just spoken about into research criteria, you're looking at a sell price of more than 35, your monthly sales above 600. And remember at this point, we're looking at an individual product. So we're trying to find a product. So one product, probably one brand, that product, which is gonna lead us to the market. And we evaluate the market separately. But at this point, you're looking for that high potential product, which leads you to the market. So sell price above 35, above 600 sales a month, less than 100 reviews on that product, and your product weight is less than five pounds, size is less than 18.14.8, or large standard size. Now with the weight and the size, it should be noted, you can definitely go above that. But the key is that if you go above that, you need to focus very heavily on profits. So you need to be paying special attention to your profit margin. Some people, they want a concrete guide. That's why I have included this here. And so your first step, this is where we go from strategy to actually doing this. And that is gonna be with AMZ Scout's product database. Now you're gonna log into your AMZ Scout account, go to product database, and you can see all of these inputs before we look for products. And we're gonna be focusing on price, reviews, sales, product tier or size tier and weight, exactly as per the criteria we just outlined. And once we input those, as you can see, minimum $35, minimum sales 600, we're actually gonna click find products. And this is then gonna present us with results for these products or for the search. And as you scroll down, you're gonna see a whole lot of products like this with multiple data points. I like to focus on these, estimate sales, your price and reviews. That's gonna tell you quite quickly how competitive is the market of this product likely to be. Remember, we're still dealing with an individual product here. We're not looking at markets yet. These hopefully will lead us to good markets. And then pricing, of course, you might see, okay, the price is 129. Well, you know, I don't have the budget to spend 30 or $40 per unit manufacturing. So that might be out of your range, but we wanna see a good price point above our criteria. And then sales, of course, that's telling you this product is selling extremely well. As you go through those results though, this is critical. There are certain things that you want to watch for, even if they match, even if the products match your criteria, certain product types you do not want to do. Uh, and you, again, may do them if it's your strategy, but in general, sellers should avoid these if they're keeping it to the simpler strategy or just starting out. Each of the products here, you can see we have Advil liquid gels, we have bed sheets, we have a patio furniture cover. Each of these have a problem. The first is a big brand. You don't wanna be competing with Advil. You're a small brand, no one knows your brand yet. Neither would you want to compete with Nike or Canon. So be aware of big brands. They're gonna have great metrics here because people don't mind the reviews. They trust this brand that's been around 60 years. The second, bed sheets. How are you gonna develop bed sheets? How are you gonna improve bed sheets? This is a very good example of low development potential. And thirdly, patio furniture cover, 
at least in some markets, this is going to be bought mainly in the rainy season. And so it's going to be seasonal. Another example I haven't showcased here is actually dangerous or PPE goods, which are going to have hazmat reviews, et cetera. So be careful of those battery operated products. And so these are the types of things you just want to be aware of. Another, if you want to keep it super simple, another one I would say you can avoid is products which have to be in multiple variations. Some products lend themselves to, you don't just sell one, you have to sell five or so. If you want to keep it really simple, keep it to a product where you're not doing variations, at least in the beginning. And so out of the results that we actually got from the search, this product really stood out to me. And I want to explain why it immediately jumps out and you want to apply this in your research. You can see that this is a bundle. There's multiple things going on here. And what that immediately tells me is there's creativity here. There's an opportunity to bundle this differently, to add new components. Secondly, gift box. And this, as many of you might know, if, if you know my channel, is my favorite niche on Amazon, is giftable products. And this is actually because of a really unique relationship with gifts. The gifter, they're the individual who buys your product, but they're not the individual who uses your product. Their goal is to buy your product as a gift and give it to someone else. Now, generally, when another person receives something, anything, they're going to be happy. And so at that point, you have helped the gifter, the buyer, achieve their mission. And they're going to leave you a really good review. They're not the one who continues to use that product. So they're not the person who would leave a bad review because they're not actually using the product. And neither would the person who received it you know, go back to them and say, hey, change your review. This is a bad product. So it has that kind of, and I'm not saying have a shoddy product. I'm just saying it has this review benefit. In terms of gifting though, that's something you want to look out for and that differentiation bundling opportunity as we see here. And I just want to make sure we are good. Oh, perfect. Thank you very much, Jim. I, I appreciate that. And so if we look a bit closer at, at, this, at this product here, you can see that, and what I would want you to do at this point is get five products. I'm using this one as an example, but you're doing the same process and you're getting five individual products together like this. Once you find those that appear high potential to you, Use this little plus icon to add that to your product tracker. Now you have a nice little short list in AMZ Scout that you can refer back to. But at this point, this is where we begin looking at, let's find the market for this product. We found an individual product here, but what's the market? And how you're going to do this is you're going to copy the ASIN with these two blocks over here. And then you're going to come over to the left-hand side, and you're actually going to click on reverse ASIN lookup on AMC Scout. That's going to open this window, and you're going to drop in your ASIN. You're going to set the number of words one to seven, because you don't want to limit this. You want to see everything you can at this point. And as you can see, once we click find keywords, it brings us the keywords for this type of product. And these are going to lead us to the market for this product. So this is where we, it's a, it's, it's a very distinct transition, which not a lot of people get clear on. And if you can get clear on this, the difference between individual products and markets, it's going to help you a lot with your research. Here we get a relevance score. So how related is that term to our actual product? And then we get search volume per month. Now, a really bad example here would be if we had like garden decorations. That would have huge search volume, but it's not really relevant to our wind chimes, to our sympathy wind chimes. 
And so that's not something you would choose just because it has high volume, it has to be relevant and high search volume. And you can see we got some very good options here. Even sympathy wind chimes, great volume. Here, I recommend you choose your top three terms. They have good volume, but they're very relevant to your product. And with those in tow, we are going to drop those in on Amazon. You can see each has dropped in separately, presents us with the market below, which is perfect. This is when you're looking at the market. So you can see how from the product idea, we grab the keywords, which led us to the markets. And on one product, we're evaluating three markets, the three highest potential ones. From here, I want to bring in the Chrome extension at this point. Anytime you're on Amazon, like we have just typed in sympathy wind chimes on this back screen, you'll see a little icon at the bottom, a niche score from AMZ Scout. And if you click that, this window pops up on top. It's our Chrome extension. And I want you to focus for now only on this top piece over here. And I can highlight that for you. This. Now that is a great snapshot of this specific market of sympathy wind chimes. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take that snapshot and drop it below each of our chosen three keywords. So you can see for wind chimes, here is the data, then memorial wind chimes, and then sympathy wind chimes. As before from our reverse ASIN, there's less volume on each of these, but we are niching down. Wind chimes, obviously gonna be more competitive. Memorial wind chimes, we're getting way more specific. It's probably gonna be a bit less competitive. But what I wanna show you that's very interesting. As you move to the next level, the average price actually goes up and your average reviews comes down. And that is our primary goal as we covered in the beginning. We want, of course, we want a lower competition area and acceptance of low reviews, but we also want a higher price. So this is a good example of as you niche down, can actually begin to premium price more. And so in this example, we would choose sympathy wind chimes as our best possible market for this specific product. You can also see there is a visibility score here and a niche score. And this again would be at the top of your Chrome extension, but visibility tells you how many of AMZ Scout's users have found this. The lower, the better. So you can see two, way more of them have found this than this. And your niche score, again, based on multiple factors. But actually, as we niche down, that niche score goes up as it should. So these are other good snapshots you can use to quickly identify opportunity. Now, we take our best possible market that you have found for this product, type it into Amazon, and let's look at the first five organic results. So we're skipping the sponsored ones at the very top of page one, straight to the top five organic. Now below each, I love this little tool. This is called AMC Scout Quick View. And it allows you to quickly see the estimate sales per month right over there. You can see that's like almost 6,000 sales a month. So, and I need to give a big shout out to that team as well. I asked them to actually add that estimate sales, I'm prob probably amongst many, many others, and they did, which is awesome. And if I quickly move to highlight those, you can see we're going to focus on reviews, price, and sales. And to make it even clearer for you, I'm actually going to remove what's in between. This is how you want to evaluate your market. Tools are amazing and extremely useful, as evidenced here but you also want to spend a lot of time on Amazon itself. It's where you're going to end up selling. And so it's where you should be looking. How, what is happening here? How is my offer going to look here? What do people do? It's very, very important. How do these results pages look? You don't want to become too detached with what's actually on Amazon by spending too much time in tools as well. That's why I love these on-page tools that they have integrated, such as Quick View. But we can really quickly look at this relationship. 71 reviews, 800 sales. Seven reviews, 
almost 600 sales. Now, this is a bit of a lower price point. Doesn't worry me in this situation, but it's something you want to consider. You don't want to see a lot of offers start pouring in here at like $17 if your goal is above 35. That's really going to bring the prices down. But in general, this looks great. 18 reviews, almost 1,000 sales, and so on. So we're maintaining a price point, low reviews, high sales. And this shows you an acceptance of low reviews. This is exactly what you're looking for in your markets. I also like to look a little further down. So this is toward the bottom of page one. And let's see what else is happening here. Let's just confirm what we have seen above. And again, here we see very good relationships. I specifically want to show you this. This is the best thing you can see for an acceptance of low reviews. We have 13 reviews, okay, so less reviews, $45 sell price, so higher sell price. And here, more reviews at a lower price. And this one is selling double what this one is. It's selling double what a cheaper, higher review count offer is selling. And that is a perfect example of low review acceptance. What it tells you is the customers, they're willing to choose this other product based on product design, based on different factors other than just reviews or who's been there the longest, or even which is the lowest price. I'm willing to pay way more for this one because the design is amazing. You can, you can create an amazing design. So that is what you're looking for here. Now on our Chrome extension, we just zoomed in a little bit, same keyword as you can see. And here you wanna be looking at your price, sales reviews, just the same, but you can see in this case, it's columns. And you wanna be comparing those metrics. On page one, my absolute minimum test is to see at least two sellers on page one. They have less than 100 reviews and they're selling over 300 sales a month. That's an absolute minimum. Here in our session today, we're being extremely strict. We're saying under 100 reviews, over 600 sales a month. And so we can see that, for example, here, 70 with 800 or 35 with 608, 17, 674. This is how you're checking. Another thing I want to show you, though, is when we move to the next stage, and we can see we just highlighted these, which would correspond uh, pretty much with those checks, whether you're doing over 300 or over 600 is up to you in terms of sales per month. If you want to be really strict, use over 600 a month, harder to find those markets. Over 300 sales a month, also extremely good. But here, I also like to use this score that AMZ Scout has, which is for private label. So how good is this product for private label? Is also one for retail arbitrage or reselling, as Jim actually touched on previously. I've just removed that column to keep it simple here. But if that's your focus, you're also going to be able to see a score for that too. But private label, which I'm focusing on here, we can see lots of nines and eights. That's very, very good here. And then if we check what we're looking for, over 600 sales a month, under 100 reviews, we actually have seven. So, and, and we haven't even scrolled down the page here, but we have seven sellers on this front page doing over 600 sales a month with less than 100 reviews. And we see a maintenance, maintenance of price point, which is absolutely critical as well. You can see here all all above $30, most of them actually above $40. So this is looking very good. And this is what you wanna be checking for your markets. And before I move to the next stage here, I wanna to touch quickly on, at this point, you've evaluated these markets and you're going to either give them a tick or a cross. You're only going to move to the next stage with the products that have proven to you that they're high potential based on what we looked at here and that you have, for example, two or three sellers on page one 
with less than 100 reviews doing over 600 sales a month if you're being very strict or over 300 sales a month if you're being less strict, but that's still very high potential. You're only moving to the next stage with the best markets. And then from here, I wanna show you the product funnel. Now, you'll remember these criteria from the beginning. What the product funnel basically does is add like 30 more, and it ends up giving you a profit score for that, for that specific market, a market score for the market, and a development score, equaling a weighted score. And at the end, you can look at this and compare your product ideas and choose the absolute best, while also ensuring a product is actually high potential. So let me show you this. It is really simple. It's nothing fancy. It's literally something you can use in Excel or numbers and looks like this with your columns across here. I break it down quickly. You've got your criteria at the very top. Let me make sure you can see this. A little bit about what that criteria is and then your input next. So for example, Zen Garden Kit. And then you would have Zen Garden Buddha, Meditation Mat. You're gonna drop in the rest of your products here. And then on this other side, we have in the sheet, as you have this uh, with you on your device, you can see explanations for certain things. There's also worksheet two at the bottom here, which is a fulfillment fee list, also very useful. I have a full step-by-step -step video guide. Watch that in tandem with filling this out and it will explain it fully. And then we have a how-to, just on formatting, how to insert accurately, and lastly, a support section. Any bugs or any problems, just send us an email there and we'll sort you out. So that is an intro. And now we're gonna fill in for our sympathy wind chimes. We're gonna add our keyword, first of all, that's our best market, the URL for that keyword. This is cool because you can come back here anytime and quickly jump to your markets direct. Then you have a customer favorite to follow. Now your customer favorite URL, you're gonna drop in here. And I'm gonna explain what this is. So on our page, you can see a lot of offers here. What you're looking for is an offer that stands out to you because it's doing well for a specific reason. It could be in this case, gifting. And in this example, I really like the middle two, but I particularly like this option here. And the reason is they've really positioned everything, their aesthetics, the quality towards being premium, although they're not even charging a premium price at this point but I wanna enhance the gifting experience. That's what I wanna do here. That's why people are choosing this offer a lot. And so what you're doing with a customer favorite is you're choosing one, which is ahead of you, but employing a strategy that's working and that you wanna build on and surpass. And that's how you're gonna break into this market. In this case, I'm choosing this one. You can see they built out great packaging, even have this like suede inlay for the product. And they have this traditional card, which I think is very smart. This is a sympathy wind chime. So this allows someone to customize the message within that card for that individual without us having to actually customize the actual product every time. And so this is really smart as well and personable for the gifter. So I like how they've put this together. We'll drop that in. And then why is that the customer favorite? You're literally going to right in here, the exact reasons I just gave. Why are you choosing that one? Your page one average price, straight from your Chrome extension, customer favorite price, of course, from that listing, and is the price above 30? This is automatically gonna calculate for you, so don't worry about this. Page one average monthly sales from your extension, then your customer favorite monthly sales, obviously from quick view or your Chrome extension, but for that one, this will automatically calculate as yes or no, if those sales are above 300. Page one average reviews from your extension, customer favorite reviews, cost from that listing. And then here, this is our absolute minimum. Do we have two sellers on page one with less than 100 reviews? 
doing over 300 sales a month. Of course, as per your test, you're going to fill in yes or no. This is not something you type. You just click a little drop down and choose yes or no on these ones. And then we have our customer favorite weight, length. There's also width and height next, but you're going to fill those in straight from their listing under product info. And then is that weight under 4.75? That's going to auto calculate for you. Drop those in. And then again, here we'll auto calculate on the customer favorite size tier and give you the exact uh, product size tier for that customer favorite. This will automatically calculate as well. And moving on to a bit more of the interesting ones here is you're going to fill in yes or no. Is it high development potential? Is it seasonal, dangerous, or PPE? Is there big brand competition? Or is it a fad like fidget spinners or likely those puppet toys? Then we get to problem differentiation. And this is critical for your development potential. Let's look at problem two. There's four of these, by the way, but let's look at two. We found that in this review, and you're specifically looking for reviews mentioned over and over across the market, but they suggested the wood needed to be waterproof on these wind chimes. So that's something we found here again and again, and we would use waterproof materials or a coating. This one was also very interesting. It's not only about fixing, but it's also about improving based on suggestions. And they said they could at least include a traditional card. That's really interesting because it's actually part of our strategy. But that's also what you're looking for here. Put in the problem, put in the differentiation, how you solve that. Critically here, a visual differentiation is always more powerful than non-visual. Because remember, that's going to help you convert. You can have it on the front of your listing. That's much better. For example, here, waterproofing, that's not really going to help us convert. We could market it a bit, but having this traditional card on the main image, that's really going to help us. However, there are some things like waterproofing that's going to help you with longevity because you're going to get far, far less bad reviews. So it's not only about visual, but just keep that in mind. Visual changes are much stronger. Then you also have a problem differentiation summary overall of what is your strategy with the product that you fill in here. Then go to Alibaba. Once you've done supplier research, you're going to fill in the URL to that supplier over here and drop in your goal sell price. This is not your customer favorite price. It's not an average price. It's what, what do you want to sell yours for? That's what you're filling in in gold sold price. Manufacturing cost. You can see we could actually purchase that for $5, but we want to be conservative here. You always want to be conservative. We're probably going to brand this, change this. We might go higher quality, so $7.25. Shipping this could be from your freight forwarder could be from your supplier or freighters, as we have a quote here. This quote was actually for 3,000 units, but I'm going to be super conservative. Let's say it was for 1,500 units. That's $3 a unit. And so our landed cost, that's how much is it for making this product, manufacturing, and shipping it to the FBA warehouse, because that's a DDP quote. It's going to be $10.25. That's our landed cost per unit. Potential product length, width, height, these are based on your product, not your customer favorite. You might be shortening the product, lengthening the product. What is your product going to be? That's what you fill in here. And it's probably something you'll have in your communication with your supplier. Then we actually move on to referral fees. Here, you can open the Chrome extension and you can just click this drop down arrow and then profit calculator, drop in your goal sell price here. And then it's going to automatically tell you that referral fee. In this case, $6, very often 15% of your sell price. This is what you're paying Amazon for bringing you the sale. We then have our item weight. So that's again, our product's actual weight when we put it on a scale, ready to sell. How much does it weigh? 
and dimensional weight. Please remember this one. This is so, so critical. And I want to make sure this is clear. But this one, you're going to take your product's length times width times height and multiply those out. So 11.5 times 5 times 2.5. Remember, that's our product size. You're going to get a big number, and then you want to divide by 139. It's going to give you a number, in this case, 1.03. Now, this is your product's dimensional weight. If your product is very light, but it's quite big, like a whiteboard, for example, it's going to have a huge dimensional weight, even though it's not that heavy. And Amazon is always going to use the bigger of these two. So remember, we have the item weight that's putting it on a scale. It's a normal weight we're all used to. And dimensional weight per this calculation. You have to work out both. You can see here that Amazon is going to choose the larger of those two as the outbound shipping weight. And that is what your FBA fee is based on. In our case, that's 103, not one, because this one's bigger. That is going to give us our fulfillment fee. This will auto-calculate for you. You can actually see it here in the fee schedule. And then automatically, we get our profit per unit and our profit margin per unit also auto-filled here. Lastly, it's going to take everything and it's going to compress it into a profit score for that product and a market score for that product. And then you are going to fill out the development score. There's some things a tool cannot do for you. And this is going to get easier as you add more ideas because then you have more comparison. And relatively speaking, you can say, okay, this one I really can improve. Bed sheets, I can't really improve this much. So you're going to be able to accurately input this one. Automatically, you then get a weighted score and you have a note section, which you can fill in other stuff as you do this. The cool thing, and where this really pays off for you is in this end screen, is now you can look at this overall and say, wow, you know, I was really excited about this product, but it's got really bad profit margins. And so I'm definitely not going to move forward with that. But you're drawing concrete, line, hard lines in the concrete on what to move forward with and what not to move forward with, and you're confirming high potential. And that's the key with this. I know it's detailed, maybe a little boring in some places, but you're covering your bases to make the right choice here. So your recap, you have your three prongs of a high potential product. You have your product research criteria, you move through the process we just did, and then you have your product funnel giving you your final insights to make a concrete decision. So overall, and I don't want to run over too far, but what do you need here? I think the key is you need tools which work as, as evidenced here, and you need information of some sort. And that can be completely up to you if you want to learn for free or you do want to go with a program of sorts. However, today I've got two very, very cool bonuses that I did want to also share with you before we do a quick Q&A. And I want to bring the prices straight in at this point. Tools is $3.99 for a full year. And information is $3.997, but that's not for a year, that's for life. So that's forever. And we're going to get a bit more into these. There's also a quick QR code if you just want to scan that to check these out. But the tool bonus is your AMZ Scout suite as we went through today with all of these different sections here. Nine bonuses, and then you've got, and that includes your product funnel as well. And your info bonus is FBA Mastery. So this is actually the program I co-teach with Seth Kniep, and it's highly in-depth. And today I've got a very cool bonus for you if you are considering this program as well, which I'm gonna jump straight to now. But I did think this was a, a really cool insight from Wanda, who is a Just One Dime member. And she was explaining that she, someone asked her about Just One Dime if she has any regrets. And she was saying she paid 100 grand for college education. And so investing in Jod was a no-brainer for her. 
and actually loved the program. But in any case, this was also done not on just one dime or anything, so it was an unbiased review. And it's something I do gel with in terms of people never raise a, a problem with paying hundreds of grand for college education. But then when you have really good programs online, there's often a bit more kickback on those. But today, if you are considering FBA mastery, what I'm gonna be doing is I just showed you that product funnel and I'm gonna be giving you 10 ideas within that funnel. These are already researched 10 ideas that you can begin with, work off of, even use. And that is only gonna be live because I know people worry about competition on products. It's only gonna be live till the end of this event. So you have to sign up before the event, but that way it keeps it to a smaller group so that there's not so much concern over you know, the sharing of those ideas either. Uh, and there is your QR code as well. So there are our QR codes and I'm gonna jump straight into Q&A because I know I'm a couple minutes over here. And wonders in the chat box, awesome. And thank you for letting, letting me share that as well. Perfect. And I'm not sure where I start from. I'm just going to scroll back. And let me make sure that's not over those. Should you, uh, and Sophie asks, should you look for boring products that you could sell that have high demand, but low competition, for example, like a tablespoon. Boring products that you could sell, high demand, low competition. Yes. However, Sophie, the only thing I would say is be very careful of a product you can't differentiate. Development potential is key. Because the thing is, it might be great right now, but everyone's going to over time, work that out. And if you don't have a fundamental difference, it's going to end up in price wars. Price gets pushed to the bottom and you have no reason or you give the customer no reason to really choose you long-term. And Herbert, and awesome to see you, Herbert. The, the one you chose has an obvious visual perceived value, especially for gifting. It looks fantastic, not blah. Yes, I love it. It's 100% it's true though. It seems uh, perhaps too simple. Like, oh, that one just looks nice. That's a lot of the time what it comes down to for customers. That one looks amazing. I'm buying that one. I don't even mind if it's $5 more. That one looks great, especially in the gifting market. So yes, and that's also why your, your differentiation, your differences, they should be... Uh, visual if possible spending a whole lot of money making an app better it's it's not going to be you're not going to be able to visually market it as much as you know adding a whole new handle and function to a product which is just going to jump off that page Okay, and then for anyone who did join a little late, I believe this will be emailed to everyone with a replay as well. Sophie says, how do we determine if there are too many sellers for mine to rank on page one? So I think that's the same. What I would do here is the exact same test as we did in terms of acceptance of low reviews is if I see a seller like we saw there, like seven reviews, and they're ranking like third organically on page one, there certainly are not too many sellers for you to rank on page one. There will be some situations if you don't stick to the criteria we covered today and you go with products which don't match our criteria, then you might end up going you know, into a market where the average is 3,000 reviews on page one, and they're each doing like 3,000 sales a month. That's going to be extremely hard for you to displace them from those rankings because you've essentially got to make more sales than them. 
And, and so unless you have a really cool, unique difference, people choose you because of that rather than reviews, very hard for you to rank there. Awesome. And also the AMZ Scout offer is also in the chat box. If you guys don't have tools, highly recommend. Merch. Please, sp please speak to us about Merch by Amazon. I'm new on Merch in tiers 10. What should I do to sell? So Galaxy, I don't specialize in Merch myself. I'm sure we'll have others on uh, today or this evening who can speak more to this. Uh, however, Merch is really cool because you are, have such low risk in terms of uh, you know, you create your designs and they only print it and sell it once people buy. I do know you have to move up the tier. So you have to make a certain amount of sales and then you can add more designs. But I'm not an expert on this galaxy. So I don't want to give you the wrong information on this specifically. And Genia says, I am already a member of FBA Mastery. So no bonuses for me. Well, there is the AMZ Scout one as well. And then I believe many of you will be able to use the, uh, the product funnel as well, depending on which, depending on how you signed up for this webinar as well. And what else do we have? Mansoor asks, product hunting tools are not always working in some markets like Dubai. What do we do in that case? Can you suggest manual hunting ideas? This is a really cool question because yes, I can. Actually, when I started selling, we didn't have tools in Europe. So what we would do is we would use the Amazon best sellers list and you move through the sellers list and Within that seller's list, you are going to have a manual. You literally have like a piece of paper or a document on your computer, but use the same criteria we're going through here and you're using the best seller's list. So you could be in home and kitchen and then you move down to the next stage in home and kitchen and you're looking for super high potential products there that match your criteria. But the best seller's list is a great way to almost still have product discovery without tools. So that's what I would recommend there. And Omar says, Dan, what do you think of a business similar to Amazon that sells everything globally, but offers shipping times within three hours? I think it will win. I think, I think delivery speed is way undervalued. Um, obviously, it depends on the customer, but... A lot of customers are willing to pay a lot more in order to receive the product sooner. Or, you know, I mean, it's going to get to the point where it's like you click and place the product in my hand. I think it would win, Omar. People want things really quickly. So it's a, it's a huge, huge deal. And people will pay a lot more to, to have that convenience. And Robin, I would, on the AMZ Lifetime Bundle, I'm sure they will comment here for you. Janik, yes. So on the 10 product ideas, that's for those who sign up for FBA Mastery Tier 3 before this event ends uh, tomorrow. So if you do sign up, you're also going to get that product funnel with the 10 ideas within it but I do want to keep it a bit limited. Otherwise, everyone has those 10 ideas. How do you compare Helium 10 and AMZ Scout? Which one is better to use? And guys, I just want to make sure I don't go over time here.
one minute. So we are late on time, but on this, I'll take this last question really quickly. But how do you compare Helium 10 and AMZ Scout? I'd say both are really good tools. What I do really like about AMZ Scout that they're integrating and it's just a personal preference, doesn't have to be for you. But I like that they're integrating on-platform tools. So on-platform, they actually have the quick view option now where you can see the sales without opening Chrome extensions, et cetera. I personally love those types of tools. And so that's why it's my preference in product research specifically. But again, it just depends on your use case and, and what you prefer. Uh, but that is all we have time to. I want to say a big thank you to all of you and AMC Scout. Uh, and if you guys do want to follow along as well, we're on YouTube, just Dan Rogers with a D. Uh, but really enjoyed this. And uh, thank you again, AMC Scout, for having me. And I hope everyone gained a lot of value from this. And I wish you guys all a ton of success in Q4 and 2022. All right, guys. I will see you later. I'm gonna show you how to make $100,000 per year using the passion product formula. And here is some reasons why you should be selling on Amazon. First off, e-commerce is growing like crazy. You've seen a lot of brick and mortar businesses go out of business and you can see e-commerce is growing like crazy in the meantime, and this is pretty obvious. This is a chart showing how much in the hundreds of billions of dollars increase year over year e-commerce is doing. Last year, e-commerce made up around 12, or I think two years ago, e-commerce made up around 12% of all retail sales. Last year, it jumped up to 16%. So obviously, e-commerce is growing. If you want to make money, you're going to have to sell products online. But 50% of all e-commerce sales happen on Amazon. And something else that's very interesting about this is Amazon last year did over $400 billion in online sales. Over $400 billion of sales were made just on Amazon. And what that looks like is there's over 200, there's about 200 million prime customers and two thirds of all sales that happen on Amazon. So two thirds of that $400 billion was made by third party sellers. That's people like you and me selling on Amazon's platform. So that's a couple hundred billion dollars that third party sellers, people like you and me were able to make by selling on Amazon. And the, the stat is over 200,000 sellers are making over $100,000 per year with Amazon. That number, this is an old stat, that number is probably a lot higher by now. And here's the truth. Most people fail with Amazon FBA, why? It's because they're selling boring products. They're selling the same junk products as everyone else. They pick products with lots of competition and low margins. They don't know the real steps to success. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you what I've had a lot of success with. I've taught a lot of other people. They've had a lot of success with this. And this is the method to sell on Amazon right now. A lot of other methods used to work, they don't work. This is gonna be a proven system I've designed to make over $100,000 a year selling a unique product using Amazon FBA. And my name is Travis Marziani. I help people build Amazon FBA businesses that they love, that they're passionate about. And I help them so that those businesses can make them a lot of money, passive income, so they can get their freedom and live their dream life. And here's a little bit about me and my credentials. I have over eight years of full-time e-commerce experience, over $5 million in online sales, over 11 million views on my YouTube channel. That's my name, it's just Travis Marziani on YouTube. And you see I have over 168,000 subscribers and I've helped over a thousand people build their Amazon FBA businesses. And I'm hoping to help you do this as well. So this is what I'm gonna share with you today. I'm gonna share five steps on how to create a $100,000 per year passive income business in six months. I'm also gonna show you how to come up with a winning product idea and make a business out of it because that's something a lot of people get hung up on. They're not sure what product should they sell on Amazon. I'm gonna show you exactly how to figure that out. 
I'm also going to show you, and this might be the most important part, how to build unstoppable momentum to create your own passive income business. And here's a little bit about my story. Out of college, I got a corporate job. I ended up hating my job. I, I had no motivation to work hard because at the end of the year, if I worked my butt off, I'd get a three, four, five percent raise. And I ended up getting really depressed because I enjoy working hard. I enjoy building things, but there's no motivation for me to work hard in my corporate job. So I ended up quitting my job cold turkey a little over eight years ago to try to figure out how to create a passive income business so I could live my dream life. And I started a dance clothing company, and this is going to be very important later. I started an e-commerce company, this dance clothing company, and it struggled for years. I tried to make money and it just, it was struggling. So I ended up at one point having to even move back in with my parents. I felt like a failure. I spent a few years trying to do this e-commerce thing. It was making some money, but it wasn't really working out. I felt like a failure and had to move back in with my parents. So at that point, I knew something had to change. It was probably three or four years in my e-commerce journey. And I, I took everything that I'd learned up into that point and I made a plan. And I decided instead of selling a generic junk product, I decided to sell something that I was actually passionate about. And I used the principles that I'm gonna teach you today to hit my goal of $100,000 per year passive income within two, two months of launching my product on Amazon, my passion product, which I'll be showing you how to create a passion product in this video. So this was me, I was working 50 hours a week, making about $20,000 a year with my first e-commerce business that I wasn't passionate about to after that, after launching my product, within two months I was doing $100,000 a year profit, working about four hours a week, literally, and I know that sounds insane but it's true and i want to be clear it does take some hard work to get your business your amazon business started but that's the beautiful thing about an amazon business is once you get it up and running it's relatively passive income i mean you'll have to do a tiny bit of work here and there but it, once you build this machine it's going to keep generating you money especially if you use the systems i'm going to teach you to automate and systematize your business so this is me. This is actually just in the last six weeks. I, I'm doing a trip around Europe right now. I'm currently living in Barcelona. You know, went to went all over Europe and I'm able to travel and live my dream life. And at the same time, my Amazon business is making me passive income, which is crazy. And so here's the question. Obviously, you should create an online business. Obviously, you should try to figure out how to automate it and systematize it. But how should you create this business in the first place? And that's what I'm going to answer for you here in this presentation. Well, let me introduce you to what I call the passion product formula. It's a step-by-step -step system to be able to create a product that you're actually passionate about and sell it online. And this is this has so many benefits. And let's talk about some of the benefits. This system is so much more efficient than any other way I've personally found of making money online. It's a legit it's the best legitimate way to create a passive income business. You're also going to make more money by using this system than a lot of other things cuz Unlike a lot of other ways of making money online, what I'm gonna be teaching you here is how to create a legitimate business that's actually something that you love, something that you're passionate about. And when you're passionate about your business, you're gonna make more money because you just care about it as well. I'm also gonna teach you in this, uh, some of the, another benefit would be how to create a stronger brand because if you're creating a product that you're passionate about, you know how to create a really strong brand around it. And if you're doing this method that I'm gonna be teaching you of selling a unique product that you love, you can sell it on Amazon, but you can also sell it on Shopify. You can also sell it in retail stores, unlike private label, for instance, where if you create a private label product, it's very hard to sell it on a Shopify website. It's very hard to get into Walmart. When you're creating your own unique product that you're passionate about, getting into Walmart isn't that hard. And some other benefits is automatic income, and it also allow you to basically promote this product on social media. Because again, if you're doing a generic, boring, private label product, nobody cares about your product. They're not gonna follow you on social media. But when you're using this method, people will follow your social media account and you'll get a ton more traffic and a ton more sales to your product. So let's keep going here. And this is a formula that I feel like I've perfected over the last year, eight years. I've done it myself. I've had a lot of other people that have done it. And the steps are basically this. There's five steps. You're gonna go from an idea, I'm gonna show you how to create an idea, to creating a brand around your idea, to crowdfunding your product, basically making it so you can raise all the money you need to start your business 
without having to spend any money on this business. And, th and that's what I've been able to do. That's what a lot of other people have been able to do. And I'll give some concrete examples of this later. Then I'll ta talk about how to manufacture your product and ultimately how to launch your product. So the next thing is how much time investment? I get this question all the time. Well, a regular job is gonna take you 40 to 60 hours a week. And I understand a lot of people watching this, they're busy, they're working the 40 to 60 hours a week. But using the passion product formula, if you spend four to six hours a week for the next three to six months, you can have exactly what I'm talking about here, this passive income business. It doesn't take a lot of time if you follow this proven system. Obviously, if you go and try to create your own online business without following this kind of a step-by-step -step system, it may end up taking you a lot longer. But what I've done here is I've, I've chiseled away all the fluff, everything, everything that you don't need to do, I don't include here. I only include the bare essentials, the, the absolute minimum things you need to do. And I laser focus on what's the most important things for creating your business. So my question to you is, can you spend four to six hours a week of your time to create a money making machine? And hopefully the answer is yes. And let's talk about the first step. I'm going to get right into this. The first step is finding your first product, finding out what products you're going to sell on Amazon. Now, there's two principles to find a, an amazing product. It must be, when you're trying to sell a product on Amazon, your product that you're selling, it must be the best product in Amazon. Remember that Amazon is a search engine. People go to Amazon to search for things that they wanna buy. And if your product is not the best result that comes up for that search, don't even bother. You wanna make it so that when someone goes to Amazon for, and searches for something, your product is by far the best product there. The second principle to this method is you need to understand the product. And that's why it's called the passion product formula is I want it to be a product that you're passionate about, that you actually understand. Well, the mistake I made with the dance clothing company was I was trying to sell a product that I wasn't passionate about, that I didn't understand, which led to me not having as much success as I could have because I didn't understand the customer. Now compare that when I launched the nut butter company, the performance nut butter, I understood the product, I understood the customer, so I was able to make a lot better of a product. So those are the two principles, and so it needs to be a new, unique, and better product. Ideally, also, another thing we wanna do here is we wanna create a premium product. As I said, we wanna create the best product you possibly can. Now, the benefit is if you have the best product, what that allows you to do is it allows you to increase the price of the product. I want you to make the most expensive and the best product which gives you a bigger profit margin. Because if you're trying to compete on price, there's always someone that's willing to lose more money than you. A lot of people fail with Amazon because they try to have the lowest priced product. Well, guess what? There's someone else that doesn't understand the numbers that they may be losing money for a year or two. They're, they're willing to lose money. Don't play that game. Play the game of creating the best product possible. Now, another secret to this whole method is try to create a product that, that doesn't exist that you wish existed. And the benefits of doing this is you're gonna have, more people are gonna buy your product. You're gonna have more, more people coming and buying your product because it's the best. It's gonna get word of mouth, it's gonna spread. You're gonna make more profit and you're gonna love working on your product because you're gonna really believe in your product. So how do you find this magical product? Well, you can use keywords to find and validate your product. Now, an example of this is AMZ Scout actually has the Amazon keyword search tool. Go in there, and a lot of people, in my opinion, do keyword, they do product research wrong. What I think you should do instead is go in and, and use this kind of a keyword tool and try to find things that people are searching for on Amazon. And then when you go and search that on Amazon, there's no product that exists for that, that certain search uh, keyword that people are looking for. So an example of this is, when I first started my nut butter company, Performance Nut Butter, there was no other keto nut butter. I went into Amazon and I know that other people were going into Amazon and searching for keto nut butter. And you can know this from tools like the Amazon keyword search tool. People were searching for this on Amazon, but there was no product yet. So what did I do? I created the first keto nut butter product on Amazon. Now, obviously I wasn't just going after the keyword of keto nut butter. It also was keywords such as paleo nut butter, whole 30 nut butter, uh, premium nut, like there were so many different uh, keto snack, like there's so many different keywords that it came up for, but keto nut butter was the first keyword that I realized, oh, people are searching for this and there's no product that exists. Second step is to create a brand and create a following. And first thing you can do is start an Instagram or a TikTok or some kind of social media and let people know, hey, I'm creating this product 
If you want to find out more, follow me, you know, join my email sign up list, make sure you have some kind of a wait list. And then also I highly recommend doing, and this is a secret, create a Facebook group called a product launch group, whatever the name of your product is launch group. Now, one thing I used Instagram a few years ago when I started my product, but I just had a student that start use TikTok instead. And he's got over 300,000 followers. He, in his first month selling on Amazon, did over $50,000 in sales. I'll talk some more stats about him, but I think right now, if you wanna grow a big following really quickly, TikTok is absolutely the way to go. So the next thing is I wanna talk about here, when you're, when you're creating a brand, it's important to create a brand because look at these, these different items here. Would you rather get the generic shoes or do you wanna pay extra money for the Nike shoes? Well, a lot of people will pay a lot more money for the Nike shoes. What does that mean? That means a much bigger profit margin for Nike because the material is basically the same. Same thing with this bar book. Would you rather have this generic bar book or would you rather have this really cool premium product with uh, cocktail cards? And the last example is, would you rather have a generic jar of peanut butter or my product, Performance Nut Like, Which one would you spend more money on? Out of all these products, which one has a higher perceived value? So you wanna brand your product because people are willing to pay more money if it's a high quality brand. And the cool thing about this is if you do the product launch group, if you create social media, your customers will help you design your product. This is one of the secrets in my formula, the passion product formula. You wanna get your customers helping you design to design their like the best product for them. And this was the design that I initially came up with for my product. I showed it to my customers and they said, that looks terrible, you need to add some colors. And they helped me come up with this design, which is a lot better of a design. So use your customers to help you create better products. Step three is to crowdfund. Now I get a lot of people telling me, I don't have enough money to start a business. I don't have any money. How am I gonna be able to start a business? Well, I raised over $15,000 or here it's only $14,000, but it was actually more money that I raised. But I, I raised $15,000 before I spent almost any money on my business, before I did any production run using Kickstarter. And you can use Kickstarter or Indiegogo to raise all the money you need for production. And the other benefit of this is it validates your idea because at this point, you don't know for sure if you have a good idea or not. A lot of people spend a ton of money trying to create Amazon products that end up failing because no one wants to buy them. So if you do a Kickstarter or an Indiegogo, you're able to basically test the market and make sure people wanna actually buy your product. And yeah, you can see here how much money I raised. And step four is to manufacture your product. And a lot of people get hung up on this. They're, they're not sure how to do it. We well, can go to Alibaba.com to find a manufacturer for your product. Alibaba.com is a giant search engine of manufacturers in places like China, India, a bunch of different developing countries. And you can get your product manufactured overseas for extremely cheap, or you can find a local manufacturer. And I do have some different tips on that. I, I have a lot of tips on my YouTube channel. This presentation is short, so I don't wanna go into it too much. But you can basically use Google. There's a few other things that you can do to find manufacturers for your product. And it's super easy. This is one of the easiest steps of the entire process because keep in mind, manufacturers, their job is to make it as easy as possible to get your product manufactured. That's how they make money, right? They only make money if you work with them and actually manufacture the product. So they're there to help you. Step five is to launch your product on Amazon. And when you're launching your product on Amazon, again, it's important to remember that Amazon is a search engine. There is, people are going there, they're searching for different keywords. So in the example of my product, which you can see right here, which is you know a keto nut butter, they're going in, they're searching for keto nut butter. So one thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you have keto nut butter in the title. You wanna have whatever people are searching for in Amazon to find your product. You want those keywords in the title. But that's not all that you've got to do. The other things that you want to do is you want to have a really high quality main image. So I got the main image of the product here. You also want to add in a bunch of other images, all these side images, basically showing the benefits of your product because people, when they go on Amazon, a lot of people, they don't want to read the description. They don't want to even read the bullet points and the bullet points are, are down here. Basically what they want to do is they want to just look at all these different images and see is this a product that they wanna buy? And remember, when people are buying things on Amazon, it's not like when they go to the store, because when they go to the store, they can pick up the product, they can hold it, they can turn it around. It feels real when you go to the store to buy a product. When you're buying something online, the idea is to communicate, what is it gonna be like to own this product? So you wanna show people that are buying this product, basically give them the same emotional reaction that they'll have 
when as if they were going into the store so you want to show your product maybe from some different angles you want to show the benefits of your product how to use your product uh, all those kind of different things for instance with performance nut butter the benefit of using it would be I, I want to show people in shape running around um, I, that's why like a lot of times in Nike commercials it's not just the products you're showing people running around you know in the shoes and I also show the ways to use it because people always ask me how do I eat this am I supposed to just rip it and eat it and yes that's one way you can do it so I show people ripping it and eating it out of the pouch I also show people putting it in coffee on bread all kinds of different things uh, you're also going to want to show basically the benefits of your product in the bullet points so on Amazon there's a list of bullet points and this is a good place to also put keywords so if you're trying to rank for different keywords in the search results for Amazon that's a great place to put all the different keywords but at the same time show the benefits of why your product's so amazing now a key thing here is when you do launch on Amazon you're going to want to get as many sales and as many reviews as possible and so that basically you can see like you know not a lot of sales at the beginning of uh, when I first launched but then with time you get more and more sales and the way to do this so you can get as many sales and as many reviews as possible when you first launch is that product launch group is your social media all that kind of stuff you basically want to use that and promote your product so maybe a few a week before you launch this product on Amazon start getting your Facebook group and your product launch group and your Instagram and your, your email list send out messages to everyone letting them know that this product is coming and so that what happens is when you finally launch your product people will be rushing and buying a ton of products and this was me two months in to selling my first real Amazon FBA product my first passion product on Amazon this was my I think my, my second month or something like that selling I did over thirty thousand dollars in revenue um, and in my first year I did over three hundred sixty thousand dollars in sales and once you subtract the product costs the the different Amazon fees there's the Amazon FBA pick and pack fee and the Amazon selling fee and just subtract some of the other costs of running this business my first year I did over hundred twenty thousand dollars in profit in my first three years I ended up doing over a million dollars in sales over three hundred thousand dollars in profit and the crazy thing about that is yes it did take me some work to start this business to be honest with you it was fun I actually really enjoyed starting this business because it was something that I was passionate about and this was the kind of product that I wanted but here's the crazy thing is once I launched that product it took on a life of its own because Amazon is a search engine once I got the ball rolling Amazon kept putting that product to the top of the search search results people would buy it they'd be happy with it they'd leave five-star reviews meaning it would stay at the top of the search results and it would just be this never-ending cycle so I spent the last three years really enjoying my life for the first time in 10 years like in the first time since I quit my corporate job I've actually loved my life again and and you can see it, it be honest with to be honest with you it helps when you're making some money and I've made pretty good money using this method and I'm not the only person that's done this AJ here is a student from my passion product formula it's a course that I have and he followed the passion product formula exactly and to be honest with you he did a better job than I did so here's AJ's story and basically AJ was a bartender for 10 years and he ended up losing his job and couldn't find another job because of the pandemic and all the craziness and you know that's a really sad place so he ended up joining my course in hopes to find a way to replace his income and I I met AJ and I'm like wow this guy is really smart and I had this idea for a product that was basically called cocktail cards and I'll, I'll show you how I came up with that idea in a second and I thought he'd be the perfect person to work with so what we did is I went on and I look I used tools like the Amazon keyword search the AMZ Scout Amazon keyword search and looked up what are the things that people are searching for in Amazon where no product yet exists and I found co uh, bartender flashcards cocktail flashcards cocktail recipe cards people were actively searching for this in Amazon but yet when I went to Amazon and searched for this exact thing no product showed up that's a light bulb moment when you see that people are searching for something but they they can't even buy that product that they're searching for that's a light bulb moment letting you know that you should create that product and yes there were books there were bartender recipe books but that's not what people wanted they wanted flashcards so we took this idea and we turned it into a product and he ended up starting to do branding he basically uh, came up with some different ideas of logos for this product and then he also at the same time created a TikTok and a YouTube channel 
promoting the idea of this product and, and trying to build a, a launch group, trying to build a tribe for his product. And you can see here, he ended up getting over 300,000 followers on TikTok. And again, I can't stress this, isn't, this enough. Right now, TikTok is such a hot opportunity. If you're not on TikTok, go get on TikTok, especially if you're trying to start a brand, trying to start a business. So he used TikTok to start growing a tribe and, and creating this brand around his business. He ended up launching an Indiegogo. And I'm a little bit jealous. He ended up raising over $100,000 for his product. This is all pre-sales. This was all before he spent a dime on this product. He didn't spend any money on this product and he had already raised a hundred freaking thousand dollars. So he made enough money to pay for his produ first production run and make a profit before, before even selling on Amazon, before even paying any money to start his business. And that's one of the reasons why you do an Indiegogo. So we knew at this point that this was gonna be a killer business. And to find a manufacturer, that's another thing you might be wondering, well, how did he, that sounds so scary, right? How do you find a manufacturer? How do you work with the manufacturer? Super simple. You go to alibaba.com and you can just type in something like flashcards here. And then you find different manufacturers of flashcards. You send them an email and you basically, you, send, you can con contact them in Alibaba and say, hey, can you customize this product? And they will say, yes, of course, they're, of course they're willing to do it. It might cost a little bit more money, but of course they're gonna do it. So AJ hired a designer with some of the money he made from Indiegogo. It didn't cost that much money to create custom cards for like each different card. We sent those files to the manufacturer and the manufacturer knew what to do with those. They printed them and they turned them into a physical product. And AJ created his listing on Amazon. He made sure and included lots of the keywords, cocktail recipes, cocktails, you know, flashcard here, step-by-step -step instructions, launched his product on Amazon. And within the first month, he ended up doing over $50,000 in sales, over $20,000 in profit in his first freaking month. I mean, most people, th this is as much money as some people make in a year. He made it in a month. And the best part about this is he didn't really need to do a lot of work. All he had, to, Amazon's handling all the fulfillment. Amazon's handling all the tough part. What is he doing? Well, basically he's just making some TikToks. He's promoting his brand and it's, it's an amazing story. So the question is, hopefully you're excited about this opportunity. Question is, how do you do this? How do you build unstoppable momentum to make sure that you're actually gonna get it done? And I showed you the basics of the formula, but I have a much more in-depth free Amazon FBA course. You can go to travisfreecourse.com to get a complete free course. And here's some of the things that I'm gonna include in the free course. It's step-by-step -step lessons, showing you exactly step-by-step -step how to create your business. It also comes with access to a free Facebook group. And I'm gonna also set you up with another person that's part of this free course. I'll set you up with an accountability buddy, someone that's gonna actually help you to go through this program. Cause that's a key to building unstoppable momentum is you need to have accountability. Also set you up with a mastermind. That's basically four to five other people that have also joined this free course. And I will set you guys up in a group. You guys can meet once a week and like help each other out, help answer any kind of questions for you that you guys might have with each other. And again, I'm gonna to try to set people up that have maybe, they live in similar time zones. So when you join, when you go to travisfreecourse.com, you'll get more information. I'll ask you some questions to make sure I set you up with the right people. And here's the other thing, if you're looking for a more advanced coaching program, next week I'm actually gonna be launching an advanced coaching program. It's the same thing that AJ went through. And if you go to the free, uh, the travisfreecourse.com, I'll put you on the wait list for that. There's gonna be limited spots, probably only 50 people that I'm allowed to join. So if you want to get that free course and for the chance to join my more advanced program, go to tr travisfreecourse.com and thank you for watching.
Hello, guys. Hopefully, I'm unmuted. Uh, let me just make sure. It looks like I'm good to go. All right. Hey, my name's Ryan Hogue, and today I would like to talk to you guys about a little bit of a different way of making money online than what you've been uh, hearing about today at Super Seller Fest. By the way, um, how about what a great job every all the other presenters have done prior to me? Uh, a lot of people are talking about Amazon FBA. I would just like to mention that uh, that's how I got my start with e-commerce. It was um, selling on Amazon FBA, launching my first FBA product, which I did in early 2017. And uh, the rest is kind of history from there. Uh, I'm to, to date, I'm a multi-million dollar Amazon seller, but the journey took me in a couple different places. Like a big part of my experience that I think is unique to me and that it, it led me to uh, starting a YouTube channel to talk about it and starting an online school where I talk about it that I call Ryan's Method, uh, that I took a complementary approach to making money online. It wasn't just Amazon FBA. Not that there's anything wrong with FBA and um, selling physical products on Amazon, but I learned that you can sell products that necessarily don't exist yet as well. And no, I'm not talking about drop shipping. I'm going to talk to you guys about print on demand. Um, there's definitely a lot of um, interest in this topic because when I started my YouTube channel to talk about FBA, uh, I realized that my print on demand videos were doing a lot better. So that's what I've been talking about for um, probably the last three years now on YouTube. If you guys um, haven't had a chance to check out my YouTube channel as well. Uh, so first, let me introduce myself really quickly. I did mention that I've got a YouTube channel. You can find it at Ryan Hogue Passive Income on YouTube. Uh, while I do talk a lot of print on demand, I mix in um, some general e-commerce content and do the occasional FBA video as well. I do still sell Amazon FBA products to date, but um, if the YouTube algorithm is going to show my videos to more people, if I talk about print on demand, well, then that's what I'm going to do. So <laughs> you'll get a lot of print on demand content as well over there. And uh, if I pique your interest with what I'm going to talk to you guys about in this presentation, then you can always follow up with me over there and find out a lot more about um, the opportunities. So uh, again, a little bit about me. I Graduated college, uh, what, like 2012, I think, 2013, 2012, um, almost 10 years ago. Worked as a web developer right out of school. Um, I've always been pretty ambitious. In addition to having a job, like I started my own web development uh, company, you know, one man company, uh, doing freelance work and also um, building my own websites on the side, just trying to monetize my time, basically. Because uh, I, I mean, as, you, as everybody watching knows, this life has a lot to offer, <laughs> but if you're stuck at a desk working nine to five every single day, kind of doing what you're told to do when you're told to do it, you're not going to get to experience, um, you know, all the great stuff that that's out there. So my goal was to make as much money as I could uh, initially, and um, hopefully one day figure it out, right? Figure out how to get out of the rat race. Ultimately, you know, I made good money, but I was trading my time for money. And I realized that the only real way to get to this idea of freedom that I had in my mind was to make passive income, right? That's probably why we're all here. We need hopefully not just side income, right? I think there's almost like an evolution of how we think about this. It starts with, I need more money, right? And, uh, or maybe it starts with like, how do I increase the amount of money I'm being given for my time? And then it leads to, you know, inevitably I need more money. And then hopefully it leads to, I want to make passive income so I can actually do things other than sit at a desk all day, which I do still do a lot of um, for what it's worth. But, you know, I, I make the choice to now. I am self-employed now. So I worked as a web developer for eight years, um, ultimately left my job last year in early 2020. I held on to it for a long time, but I'll be honest, I didn't have uh, the worst job. You know, working as a web developer was was not that bad. Um, anyways, uh, I also have been teaching at the college level for seven years. I'm in my eighth year teaching, you guessed it, web development. I told them that I could also teach uh, e-commerce, but they just didn't seem interested, which is a little bit weird, right? You would think that the university that I teach at would want to help uh, students you know, make their own money, right? Because that's, that's not a common topic that um, at least I'm familiar with. Like, I don't think there were many courses about that uh, at the schools that I attended. And um, anyways, they weren't as interested in that, but if, you know, they, they were interested in letting me teach web development and um, helping students, you know, file in line to get their nine to five job and live predictable lives, right? And I, I really respect anybody as long as they feel fulfilled and happy with their jo choices in life. But, you know, I, I really respect people that dare to be exceptional. And um, what I'm going to talk about with you today, I'm not going to sell anybody the dream of you'll get rich quick, but I'm going to show you 
uh, a glimpse into how much money I make doing this. And just to be transparent, like my entire journey is documented uh, publicly via income report videos on my YouTube channel and on my um, personal blog at ryanhogue.com. By the way, my last name is H-O-G-U-E. I know it, it's hard to spell. A lot of times people get um, one of the letters mixed up, but ryanhogue.com. You can follow my entire journey from my first sale from my Amazon FBA business back in early 2017 through today. So I did mention that uh, I opened an online school. So drawing from my experience as a teacher for you know over seven years at this point, I opened my own online school due to just demand for uh, step-by-step tutorials of exactly how I've accomplished what I've done today, which I'm also not trying to imply is, is anything special. Like being a multi-million dollar Amazon seller sounds cool, but I've been selling on Amazon for almost four years. No, four, yeah, over four years now. Whoa, man, time flies, right? Um, over four and a half years. So, you know, as you go on, uh, it just kind of, it, it just adds up, right? And we're talking revenue there. So I didn't make $2 million profit off of uh, selling on Amazon. <laughs> I won't disclose the full profit, um, but, you know, life is good, like I said. And the best part about it is that for the most part, it's passive, right? That should be our goal. Even if you only make a little bit of additional money to start, if it's passive, you know, you can keep that ball rolling and uh, scale, right? That's the, that's the goal. Now, I want to tell you a story about what I did yesterday. I'm a huge NFL fan. It's the only sport I really follow closely. And when I say closely, I follow it way too closely. Yesterday was Sunday. NFL was on. I love my fantasy football. I'm glued to the TV literally all day through the Sunday night game, which ended at like 11 p.m. Um, it was a great day. I won all of my fantasy football matchups. And the reason I'm sharing this is not because anybody cares about me winning my fantasy football matchups. It's because I also made over $200 selling print on demand products. Now, I was talking about being a multi million dollar Amazon FBA seller. Now I'm talking about print on demand. Like I said, we've had a lot of great talk about Amazon FBA prior to my presentation. And I wanted to mix it up and talk about something that you may or may not have heard of. So I got an additional $200, give or take a little bit more than that profit, not just revenue, but profit in my pocket while doing nothing but watching football. How did I do that? That's what I'm going to show you in this uh, in this video. Uh, this is live, so it's not in this live uh, webinar. So first, let's start with what is print on demand. Now, um, I am on a schedule. I can't talk too long about it, but let me give you a high level insight into what print on demand is. I'm currently wearing a blank black T-shirt. There's nothing printed on this shirt. It's just a well, actually, there was there was a Nike logo here, but I think I've uh, washed it enough times that it washed off. So now I got a blank black shirt. Now with print on demand. I can go to Amazon right now, or really there's other marketplaces that you guys are aware of. It's not just Amazon, but I always prioritize Amazon because that's where you're going to make the most money. That's where the most customers are, right? It's where the most um, money is being transacted. So I focus on Amazon and I can create a product listing on Amazon right now for a t-shirt, for a coffee mug that you see here on my screen. Hopefully my screen is sharing. Yeah, it says it's it's sharing. All right, good. Um, And I can put a design. I can go launch Photoshop or whatever I like to design. And it could be simple text, right? Like the, the coffee mug you see there, motivated by caffeine and puppies. And I can design a coffee mug and create a rendering of what the finished product will look like. Coffee mug, t-shirt. Um, there's lots of products. And I can list it for sale on Amazon. And that product doesn't need to exist unless it sells, right? So I have no liability, no downside in this, I'm creating listings of products that will exist if they sell, but don't need to exist right now. So there's no upfront investment. And by the way, I'm not trying to sell you anything. Like this is just, I'm just describing how this works. Um, Plenty of people are probably familiar with print on demand, but I'm going to show you how you can get started today. And I'm going to share with you my favorite print on demand opportunity. So print on demand basically is a way of participating in e-commerce without the, um, the risk, I guess, that you would typically associate with Um, selling products online, because typically we think of investing in the products that we're going to sell up front. And I'm a huge fan of FBA, so I'm not even trying to knock FBA. Um, But, you know, print on demand is great because it's more accessible. That being said, of course, it's more accessible. It doesn't have the uh, monetary requirements to participate that something like Amazon FBA does. So as a result, you're going to get lower barrier of entry. And what does lower barrier of entry mean? It means more competition. Of course, um, that's just part of part of the game, right? So like I said, I'm going to share with you my favorite opportunity to make money with print on demand right now. And this is something that's been around since 2015, yet still a lot of people have never heard of it. 
And uh, I would really implore you guys to kind of act on what I'm going to share with you as I share it, instead of just kind of like watching and thinking like, I'll remember it and I'll do it tomorrow. It's better to just honestly get it done right now. Um, Even if you have to like open a tab and, you know, you can keep listening to me in the background, but there is a program called Merch by Amazon. Okay. Merch by Amazon is another way of selling on Amazon. Like typically the the way that they intended for people to sell on Amazon is, is through Amazon Seller Central. With Merch by Amazon, it's a separate portal. So it, you'll never access Seller Central. With Merch by Amazon is a portal where you get a very pared down version of Seller Central. Like when I say pared down, it's probably 1% of what Seller Central is, which honestly isn't a bad thing because Seller Central can be pretty confusing, especially to first time sellers. Merch by Amazon is a lot more like focused. Like you can click here, you can click here. You have a lot less options and it basically lets you create product listings on, Mer- on uh, Amazon's catalog, except you don't get like free reign over what you want to sell. You can only sell products that Merch by Amazon will fulfill on your behalf. So when you create a product listing through Merch by Amazon, all you really need to do is upload a design. And I'm going to walk you through exactly how to like create a design. I'm going to do it really quickly in this presentation, um, but it's going to demystify it hopefully for you as well, because rather than making it really complicated, which you can do, I'm going to show you just how simple, quick, and easy it can be done as well. Okay. So you upload a design. They will generate CGI mockups of what the finished product looks like for you. And they will allow it to be available for sale on their marketplace. Typically, US marketplace uh, is what you want to prioritize. And it's available for sale. If it sells, they will do everything. They will create the product, ship it to the customer, do customer service, every, literally everything. And they'll pay you out a royalty for having made the sale. How cool is that? So you upload the design, you provide some keywords for like the title, the brand, the bullets, the description, you know, the basic stuff. That's pretty much it. You know, you, you set a price, you can select different colors and uh, shirt sizes, but that's pretty much it. Now, let me just kind of walk you through the process. Oh, and here's some proof of concept. So yesterday, like I said, I was doing fantasy football uh, all day. I made $154 profit on $680 in sales And this is actually just the US market. So I actually made more than this because Merch by Amazon also lets you list internationally. But just to show you that like this stuff works, this is my dashboard from just yesterday, the 26th of September, $154 in profit. And I didn't even do anything. Like I was literally watching TV all day. Uh, This is a screenshot of the home screen for Merch by Amazon. And I guess I should have mentioned, how do you get there? Well, if you didn't already Google it, you can go to merch.amazon.com or amazon.com forward slash merch. I recommend you see you see this uh, the slide right here where it says sign up. I would click sign up either right now or like put this high priority to do on your to do list. You need to apply for an account. It's invite only is what they call it, but in reality, no one's going to invite you if you don't show interest. So you have to click sign up, go through the process of applying, and if you are accepted, congratulations. This is a crazy opportunity to make money online with no downside to sell prime eligible products on the world's number one e-commerce marketplace. Okay. It it sounds too good to be true. Like what's the catch, Ryan? There's no catch. All right. The reality is like, I'm able to do stuff like this $154 in a day because I started before you, but I'm just future you if you put in the work. Okay. That's really what I'm trying to illustrate. There's nothing special about me um, just because I'm like talking into a webcam and a microphone right now about my success. Like you could be me in the future. You just got a later start than me. Okay. Now, if you're interested, like what products can we sell on Merch by Amazon? Well, this is a quick plug again for my YouTube channel. I did a video with my girlfriend. We bought every single product on their catalog that you can sell. And we basically did like a fashion show, okay, for men and women. So if you guys want to check that out, it's on my YouTube channel at Ryan Hogue Passive Income. Uh, Also, if you want to subscribe to the channel, I do income reports. So just to show you, I do it every month, by the way. I try to do it on the first of every month. And chances are I'll either do it this week on Friday or I may wait till Monday of the next week. It depends. Anyways, January 2020, Merch by Amazon. My sales were not great. I did $870 profit in January 2020. That's not great. And by the way, if you actually combine it with that second slice of the pie in red that says drop shipped POD, that's actually also print on demand sales. I just like to split Merch by Amazon and everything else. So if you combine them, I did what? um, Almost $2,500 in profit from print on demand in January, 2020. But, and I'll talk more about why I split them up later, but just so you know, like $870, not a great month, but look at the math, $870 times 12. 
that's an extra $10,440 a year. And that again is nothing special like that. Those numbers are being smashed. Okay. By people that do this on the side, in addition to their nine to five job. Uh, also my 2021 revenue is already just under, well, actually as of recording this, it's probably above $180,000. That's 2021. And my 2021 profit is above $34,000. So my sales picked up big time. Um, and I do talk about that on YouTube and um, I've got some other private courses and whatnot that you guys guessed it, right? Everybody's got a course these days, uh, but you know, you don't need the course to succeed by any stretch of the imagination. I only put it there because there was a demand for it, right? Uh, anyways, 2021 profit already $34,000 and it's September. And I'm sure everybody watching is aware that we are at the beginning of that hockey stick of the uh, exponential curve where the demand skyrockets in the fourth quarter. So it's been a good year. It's only going to get better. Now, what products can we sell through print on demand? Now, I'm going to only show you the print on demand products that we can sell through um, merch by Amazon. Okay. So this is just merch by Amazon, but there's other opportunities out there to sell print on demand products online. And the majority of them are free, by the way, if I didn't mention merch by Amazon's free, you never need to put a credit card on file to participate, right? You, you're thinking like, oh, you put a credit card on file, but it's free. Right. And then they're going to bill me later. No free as of right now, 2021, uh, it is still free. So you'll notice there's standard t-shirts, premium t-shirts, V-necks, tank tops, Long sleeve shirts, raglan shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, zip hoodies. Uh, that circle right there, that's a pop socket. Uh, I've got a pop socket on my phone right next to me from my, my video that I did where we reviewed every single product. I didn't realize how much fun pop sockets are to have on your phone to play with and to um, mount your phone so you can watch TV under the table while you're at dinner if there's like a Monday night football game on, right? Uh, I may be doing that tonight. We'll see. They sell um, Android phone cases iPhone cases. Guys, have you ever wanted to sell a phone case online because you had some great idea? Well, if you can get into merch by Amazon, again, you don't need any of the liability of like purchasing the cases with your design and you can get it done through print on demand with no downside and infinite upside. They added tote bags and uh, throw pillows recently. So they've been expanding the catalog. When I first started with merch by Amazon, I, I, if I remember correctly, when I first started, it was just standard shirts and premium shirts, two products. Then they've expanded it to what? Is that 16? No, 14 products now. Okay. And when you upload a design, you can list it on all of these products. So you get more coverage, right? And I always preach guys, the more online real estate you occupy, the more money you can expect to make. No one's ever disagreed with me to date. All right. That it's a better idea to list more products for sale in more places if you want to make more money. And you can do that very easily uh, through Merch by Amazon. Uh, additionally, the primary marketplace that you're going to want to sell on is the US market. Okay, that's what I always prioritize. When you just get started on Merch by Amazon, they don't let you list unlimited products on unlimited marketplaces. They restrict your ability to post a lot of products right away, but they reward you as you make sales over time, okay? So that's why you wanna get started today, apply for your account. You might not hear back about your account for weeks. So you wanna to apply today. Assuming you get accepted, you will be only able to post one product, one design to one product every day, okay? But over time, you get scaled up. So you start with one product a day, maximum 10. You make some sales, they bump you to 25. You make some more sales, they bump you to 100. Make some more sales, 500. It just keeps increasing. I'm at... Okay, I'm at tier 200,000, all right? So I have 200,000 upload slots in just my Merch by Amazon account. 200,000 is a big number. The way that I hit those um, upload goals is I use automation. And this is getting completely outside the scope of what I wanted to cover, but I know at least one person was thinking, what the heck, 200,000? There's no way you're doing that. Um, there's just not enough time in a day. Well, I use upload tools. And that's the stuff that I touch on on my YouTube and of course, in, in my courses and whatnot. But like right now, while I'm doing this presentation, my uploader is running and it's posting products for me because I wanna occupy more online real estate and make as much money as possible, okay? Secondary markets though. So I always prioritize US market. We know that's where the most customers are. Follow the customers. You guys already knew that. We can also list on international marketplaces though. This is also something that didn't used to exist in Merch by Amazon, but they have been aggressively expanding this program because they see the potential. So you can list in uh, the UK, Germany, 
France, Italy, Spain, Japan was the most recent marketplace that they expanded to. Okay. So this is just such a good opportunity. And there's really, again, no downside. And it just kind of, it's like a snowball. It just rolls and rolls and it gets bigger and bigger and it's passive, right? What was the word that we talked about earlier? Because in, in an alternate universe, I probably am still a web developer doing my freelance stuff, working a nine to five life is comfortable. The money was great, but I like, I, I had to do what I was told to do when I was told to do it. That's not, you know, it's not the life I envisioned for myself, right? It's okay to dream. Even if you fall short of your dreams, who cares? Go for it. Like Merch by Amazon may not set you free. Now, I personally know a couple people that make five-figure profits a month, but that's rare. I'm not one of those people, but it is there. It's p- the potential's there, all right? It's possible. And this is also, again, just another complementary method of making money online, right? Complementary, right? So selling FBA and selling Amazon Merch are very complementary to each other, right? They intersect at we're selling prime eligible products on the world's number one e-commerce marketplace. Now, if we're looking at this from a 10,000 foot view, like we don't actually like to pretend like I'm just explaining this to my parents. They won't disagree with the logic there. It's like, okay, you followed the customers to the biggest marketplace and you're selling in a way that's passive and scalable. What's not to love guys. Like it's just, sometimes you just got to like, keep it simple. <laughs> like nothing we've talked about so far, hopefully seems crazy because I promise it's like apply to merch by Amazon. When you get in, you'll be able to list one design and one product a day. Everybody can handle that. Okay. Now I'm going to walk you through exactly how to do that. Okay. Let's start with the design aspect. Now I'm not a good graphic designer. I repeat, I am not a good graphic designer. So, I mean, I'm out here making $150 yesterday while watching football. I'm not even a good designer because you don't need to design guys. Number one, you can purchase designs from professionals for really cheap. All right. The market has kind of determined that you can pay about a dollar for a good design. And if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel tomorrow, I'm going to drop a video. There's going to be a flash sale from my favorite go-to resource for designs. And uh, I'm going to drop a video on that tomorrow. I already recorded the video. It's going to be really good. We're going to talk about how to make a splash with Halloween t-shirts. All right. And it's going to be geared toward, towards Merch by Amazon. Anyways, as far as design goes, you can actually use a website called Photopea or Photop. I never know how to pronounce it, but it's photopea.com. They basically made a bootleg version of Photoshop that is built into a web browser and it is completely free. You don't need to make an account. You don't need to put a credit card. When I say free, it's free. Okay. So you can go here right? So no excuses, right? You've got a design application that's built into a web browser. It's about as easy as it gets. All right. Go to new project, set your width to 4,500 pixels, set your height to 5,400 pixels. The reason I'm sharing those dimensions with you is because if you don't set it to those dimensions, Merch by Amazon won't let you upload the the file. Okay. So it's got to be those. Then you hit create. Now, when you do your design guys, it can be as simple as just text, just text. The best selling uh, approach is going to be big, bold text, like impact font, which is what you see here on this slide. And um, typically you want to do white text against, because um, the best selling shirts are going to be darker colors. And the majority of shirt colors you can sell on are darker colors. So put some white text on a black t-shirt. Now, one design tip that's going to make a huge difference, or you know, it's really only a huge difference if you were going to do it the wrong way and you end up doing it the right way. But do you see on this slide how there is the same text on three different t-shirts? It says hug dealer. And it's just kind of a funny play on words, right? But the text is in three different sizes. Now, which one of those do you think is going to sell the most? Yeah, I'm pretty sure everybody got it. It's going to be the big one, guys. The big one that is easiest to read that stands out amongst all the competition in search results, typically bigger is better. Even if the end result may not look as good. Okay. This is a video. I, I've done videos on this on YouTube where I've walked through the mall, gone to um, clothing stores, taken pictures of the, the, the designs that sell in those stores. And then talked about like how this approach works. If you're physically in a store in person, right? We see it looks great, but if you're online and you're just scrolling through Amazon listings, the way that people do on their computers, on their phones, you have a microsecond to catch somebody's attention, catch the potential customer's attention. So bigger is better, right? I'm not, there's so much more to this process, guys. But like I said, I want to show you how you can just keep it simple and 
it will be effective. I promise. Cause I, I'm speaking from experience. I had an interview on my YouTube channel with somebody that used his phone, used an app called, I think it was called the over app just from his phone, text only designs. This dude made over $300,000 profit. Okay. So if he can do it from his phone, I'm confident everybody that's watching this can make some money uh, on merch by Amazon. Okay. Especially if you use a desktop, <laughs> like I'm not, I'm not a big phone guy. I love my desktop computer. All right. When it comes to listing products on Amazon, Oh, sorry. One second. My, uh, my micro Chihuahua Pablo wanted to say hello. He's mad at me because I had to block the window because um, then the, gr- the light will come through and the green screen will look weird, even though I didn't have time to set my virtual background. So it really doesn't matter. I guess I could open the window for him. Um, but when it comes to creating product listings on Amazon, guys, a quick tip. I'm just kind of closing out this uh, presentation and sharing with you some tips that I think are really going to make a difference. Now, there's so much more I could talk about, but I'm giving you some of the like basic, most effective tips. When it comes to creating product listings, guys, if you are in a niche, right? Because it's not like Amazon FBA where it's different. I mean, I guess it is like where a a different niche in FBA is literally different products, right? I think of like, it could be completely different products. Whereas when you're doing print on demand, we're selling t-shirts at the end of the day. I mean, t-shirts is one of the products that we can sell, but the scope of this presentation is focusing on t-shirts specifically. If we're in a niche that's making sales, great. That's the goal. A lot of the things we post for sale will will not sell. The majority probably will not sell. When you start finding things that are working, you are one of many. And when things work, because of, I'm sure other presenters today talked about like Amazon exposes a data point called BSR. It's, It's indicative of sales velocity. It helps us identify where customers are spending their money on Amazon, right? So if you find something that works, do this. Just store this away in your head. This also works for FBA, by the way. I've done this to expand products, products into uh, single products, into product lines, brands, right? Double down, triple down, quadruple down. If you find something that works, that's the end goal. Exploit it. You know what I mean? Like post more products there, occupy more online real estate in that space. You found something that works, you know, make it hard for people to take your sales away from you. I always thought about it that way. Like when I find a niche that works, I want to make it hard for the people that are going to find the same niche after me to take my sales from me. So I start listing more products in the same niche. Okay. Just remember that research guys, keep it simple with research. Um, there's a bunch of really great free Chrome extensions. The top one may seem, uh, may look a little bit familiar. Check out AMZ scout, AMZ scout pro. This is great for validating your niches. It works for print on demand just as well as it works for all the other um, FBA products that you guys have seen in earlier presentations today. A couple other ones that I love, DS Amazon Quick View for showing BSR in search results. AMZ Suggestion Expander is great for giving um, long tail keyword suggestions. And then Keywords Everywhere uh, expands your Google search. This one's not for Amazon, it's for Google, but you can type in something to Google and it'll basically show you like the trend and uh, similar keywords and all stuff like that. Uh, Also, I wrote a tool called the Search Merch Tool. Okay, and uh, it's on my website as well. And when you use this tool, it's like querying Amazon, except for it will filter out non Merch by Amazon results. Okay, so you only get Merch by Amazon results, which is great if you're intending to sell through Merch by Amazon, because otherwise you're going to be evaluating all this competition that is relevant, but it's not exactly our primary competition. You know, if we're selling print on demand products with the prime tag, that's our primary competition. You know, uh, non Amazon merch print on demand sellers are typically selling FBM through Seller Central. So they don't pose as big of a threat. Although I love selling FBM print on demand too. Okay. I, I've got over 100,000 products on my Seller Central account, the same one I sell my FBA products through. I've got over 100,000 print on demand products as well, guys. It's the complementary approach to making money online. At the end of the day, I just want to make money. So, I mean, if if I find something that works and, you know, I'm a web developer, it's how I built this tool and I've got a little bit of a technical mind, you know, I've also got like a couple Chrome extensions that we license me and a partner and um, given my YouTube, you know, people find me, they're like, Hey Ryan, check out this tool. It's a new um, automation tool for seller central. You know, um, there's just so much guys. That's why I had to to kind of build a private course that I do charge for. Uh, I talk a lot about it on YouTube as well, but just so you know, like full picture, uh, this stuff is manageable because there's a lot of tools you can leverage that will work for you while you can um, do other stuff, right? 
Uh, SEO, guys, you already know SEO, search engine optimization. I really love the AMZ suggestion expander for this because it gives you a preview of what customers are searching for. So you just kind of provide a seed keyword of whatever niche your t-shirt's going to be in. Look at the keywords that are associated with customer search queries. And my typical suggestion is try to include one to two to three uh, phrase match keywords in your title. You know, prioritize your title, put the most relevant keywords there. Don't keyword stuff. Again, try to do phrase match, make it similar to what someone would actually type into the search bar on Amazon. And yeah, they'll, the algorithm will typically give you a chance to at least be seen, okay? Now, when you get impressions and you don't get clicks, your click-through rate goes down. If you have a bad click-through rate and you're in a competitive niche, they're just going to bury you on, sorry, there goes my chihuahua. Uh, <laughs> there goes Pablo. Um, if you're in a competitive niche though and you have a low click-through rate or a low conversion rate, they're going to bury you on page two, three, four, five. It doesn't matter. If you're not on page one, you're not going to get seen, right? Speaking of getting to page one, I'm sure you guys are familiar with the concept of advertising. Uh, that is an option to gain visibility. And Merch by Amazon actually integrated um, Advertising Console with Merch by Amazon. And they've been changing the requirement to get access to Advertising Console. So I can't just tell you off the top of my head what it is because it seems like they're making it more and more accessible. It used to be that it was like very hard to get to advertising. But now it's more and more common. So that's actually great because a lot of people that have access to advertising don't use it. <laughs> and it's like, you're crazy not to use it, guys. It's such, a, uh, it's such a, an edge to have over your competition if you know how to use it and if you actually do utilize it. Because it's one thing to hear talking heads on YouTube uh, tell you to advertise and another to actually do it. Again, another reason why I wrote a course on how to do everything exactly as I do it step by step. Um, a course that is not necessary to succeed, but it is there in case people want it, right? Um, so when it comes to Amazon, I did a keyword search. I typed in funny Halloween t-shirt. Now, what do I see right away at the top of my screen? I see three shirts in a sponsored brand ad right at the top. They're all, uh, I think they're all owned by Disney. And then what do I see right underneath there? Four more shirts, all ads. So how do, how are we going to succeed as sellers on Amazon? I mean, it's not required to advertise, but I mean, look right here at this screen. The first seven things we see on the screen are paying to be there, right? So we got to take notice, all right? You got to play ball. Uh, and then last but not least, guys, as I wrap up the presentation, diversify. You guys guessed it. Um, when you start with Merch by Amazon, you know, that's the number one best opportunity to make the most money for your time with print on demand. But if you're going to spend your time creating these designs, and I mean, I showed you a really crappy hug dealer text design. I didn't spend too long on designs today. If you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel tomorrow, we're going to talk a lot about designs in my video. But if you're going to make these designs, guys, guess what? You can post them on Seller Central as FBM, post them on Etsy, post them on Redbubble. You can start a Shopify store, post them on eBay, uh, Teespring, TeePublic, Spreadshirt, Society6. There's so many guys. There's so many places you can post your designs that are available for sale on all these different print on demand products following a sale. Guess what? It's all streamlined. Now, there is a little bit more nuance to it because not every program functions like Merch by Amazon, where they literally do everything for you and they just pay you a royalty. That's obviously the, you know, the most simple and the most preferable way of doing it. But like there's other ways of doing it where there's companies that can integrate via software to your seller central account, to your eBay account, to your Etsy account. And when you make a sale, they have a little sync and it will automatically detect the sale. It'll bill you for the base cost of the product. Like this shirt might be $7. They'll charge you seven bucks. They'll charge you for shipping. And then let's just say I made the sale through Etsy. Well, Etsy will pay me the $25 that I collected from the customer for the shirt. I will have to pay Printful as my uh, preferred company. You can find them at ryanhoag.com forward slash Printful if you would like to create a free account, ryanhoag.com forward slash Printful. Uh, Printful will bill me the $10 it costs to create the shirt and ship it. And then the difference, you know, 10, 15 bucks, I keep as profit, right? So we already did the work. Now we're just going to post it in more places and... Um, then we're good to go, right? We're making as much money as possible. All right, so ryansmethod.com is uh, the URL for my online school. Again, I have over seven years teaching uh, experience at the college level. 
So I do have some teaching credentials to my name. If you would like to check out anything at ryansmethod.com, it is all focused on my complimentary approach to e-commerce. Disclaimer, when I got started in early 2017, late 2016, really, uh, on my e-commerce journey, I had no plans of any of this. I just kind of take everything in stride. It's been a great journey. It's allowed me to do a lot of traveling. I should have bored you guys with pictures of all the places I've traveled to just this year because it's been pretty awesome. Had to kind of crunch in uh, last year's travel plans with this year's, but uh, it's, it's been great, guys. Like, this is what life is about, you know, <laughs> as I'm sitting at my desk, uh, you know, the, 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 the single thing I was talking about, we don't want to do. I'm like at my desk talking about how good life is, right? I'm, I'm at my desk just like everybody else. But um, anyways, bonus, guys, uh, just because you were here, you get my drop shipped print on demand free mini course. Okay, so I talked a lot about merch by Amazon today. I want to also give you a step-by-step -step, like 50 page tutorial of all like literally step-by-step -step actionable advice to get your print on demand business started today. Now go apply to merch by Amazon because that's going to take you maybe five or 10 minutes, but then you have to wait. And I don't want you to lose steam. I want you to kind of carry this excitement about getting started and actually get, you know, literally get started. So AMZ Scout, uh, the hosts of Super Seller Fest, they're going to email you a link to where you can download this free 50 page step-by-step -step how to start your business um, guide that I wrote. And it's going to walk you through the Printful Etsy integration so that you can open an Etsy shop and sell print on demand products and crush it in the fourth quarter. There's no better time to start than right now. And again, your downside is capped at the 20 cents it costs to create an Etsy listing. Okay. 20 cents. So that's it guys. Um, thank you for attending. And uh, can I take any questions in the time remaining? I think I have like 10 minutes or so. Actually, let me pull up the YouTube. That'd be a good idea. One second. Is there a mock-up tool for putting photos of home decor product like sculpture in home setting background, pendant ring bracelets on humans? Yes, there are uh, mock-up tools. There are, off the top of my head, I don't, I can't remember. Like there are free mock-up tools. There's also, of course, paid mock-up tools. Um, the free ones that I've seen are typically primarily t-shirts and maybe coffee mugs. However, here's the thing, right? I referenced Printful a few times. And that's what if you, when you get my free um, starter guide, you know, 50, like literally 50 pages step by step, uh, it'll walk you through like how to get started with Printful. And when you use Printful and you upload your designs, like Printful's product catalog is probably close to 100 different products right now. If you select um, a pendant or jewelry, when you upload your design, they have like the CGI mock-up uh, software that's like proprietary to them built in. So it'll automatically generate your renderings of the finished product. And that's free, right? But then there's also alternative ones you can, um, you can use that are a little bit more premium. Um, but I mean, in my personal opinion, like you don't need to spend money on mock-ups. Uh, typically what I do is I'll take the printful ones, strip off the background and kind of customize it the way that I want. I typically just add a background image and uh, typically it works. Is it better to start print on demand as a company or as a person? Um, you know, like I think it's okay as a person. I think the, the best advice is probably always to do it as a company though. I, I mean, I, if that's an option, like create an LLC and do it through there. But your liability, I believe, is a lot more limited selling print on demand as long as you don't infringe on big brands like Disney, right? <laughs> like uh, you're going to see a lot of Disney products on Amazon that are being sold through Merch by Amazon. But just because they're being sold doesn't mean that you and I can sell them, right? We don't have the rights to Disney's intellectual property. Um, so as long as you kind of play ball and play by the rules, you're okay. Uh, best tool for niche research. Um, my favorite tool for niche research is... Um, honestly, the search merch tool, the completely free one that I built into my website because it's free. But that being said, there's also a paid tool that I really like to use called flying research. And you can go to ryanhoag.com forward slash flying research. 
Okay. And flying research, it, it's, you know, there's plenty of software tools. Like, I mean, AMZ Scout is great in this, um, in this context for validating a niche, but how do you find the niche that you want to validate? Well, flying research is focused exclusively on merch by Amazon print on demand products. And, um, they'll kind of help aid you in finding the newest best-selling niches right away. Cause if you're earlier, you're going to have an edge. Um, are there any problems to start as an individual and then upgrade to a company? I don't think so. I mean, it should be as simple as like going to your tax information, changing your name to the company name, and then switching your social security number to the tax ID of the business. But I'm not an accountant. So um, that's just in my mind um, what, what you would do. I applied to Merch by Amazon and got denied, Lily said. Uh, Lily, you can, I, it's not uncommon to get denied. I got, I got denied my first time. You should be able to create a, use a separate email address and then reapply. The record for applications before getting accepted that I've personally heard of, unfortunately, is 13, okay? Now, hopefully nobody watching this has to apply 13 times, but somebody applied 13 times and on lucky number 13 actually got accepted, so. How much investment do you need to start Amazon FBA? Uh, I personally, when I launched my first FBA product, spent $1,600 on the manufacturing side of things and then $800 to ship it to the US, total $2,400. And if anybody cares, I also paid somebody $2,500 to show me how to sell on Amazon FBA because it is quite confusing when you're going through it for the first time. And I made that back over 100 fold. So don't be afraid to spend money to make money is my suggestion. All right. Uh, does MBA, does Merch by Amazon work if I live in India? I'm not sure. I mean, assuming you get accepted, you know, the way you would use Merch by Amazon is the exact same way that I would use Merch by Amazon. So uh, some K says she got in on her first try. That's awesome. i um, looking at some older questions. James asked, if you find a keyword with high search volume, but not much products for sale, what would you do? So James, here's the thing, right? If you're selling through Merch by Amazon, they algorithmically approve and deny our submissions. So if I submit a shirt that says Hug Dealer and it's trademarked on t-shirts, I will get rejected unless I'm the owner of that trademark, right? So the reason I shared that piece of information is because if you see high search volume and no products for sale, that is often indicative of it's a protected space. You know, it's either trademarked or if you're if you were asking that in the FBA context, it could be a, a patented product as well. So, um, is this available afterwards? I think the replay will probably be online if I had to guess. Oh yeah, actually, you know what? Too, I'm gonna I'm gonna um post the replay of my presentation on my YouTube channel uh, whenever it's available as well. Uh, any other questions? Best print-on-demand company to work with and best alternative for Printful? Printful is my go-to print-on-demand company of choice. I mean, I've worked with other ones and Printful to me, like for a number of reasons, like I've gone in depth, obviously in some videos on my channel, you guessed it on my YouTube channel, but they have a huge catalog, easy to work with. Um, they reward you for being successful. So their prices are a little bit higher than what you typically see when you look at their competitors. But a lot of their competitors kind of hide the fact that they have high prices. Printful will give you discounts for being a successful seller. Like I think if you can sell a thousand dollars a month, that doesn't mean a thousand dollars profit. That means a thousand dollars in products that they fulfill, orders that they fulfill. Which if you're diversifying between Seller Central, you know Amazon, Seller Central, Etsy, and eBay, the big three. Uh, or starting a Shopify store and crushing it there, you'll get instantly 5% off your, your fulfillment costs. Um, pretty attainable. Uh, alternative, I would look at Printify or Gearbubble. I use Gearbubble um, as well. Or Guten. I mean, there's a whole bunch. There's so many. Uh, I have like one minute left. Uh, so let me see if I can get one more question. Is there a problem if I use the same company associated my FBA Seller Central account to apply? Uh, Stefan, I do not believe so. I think I probably use the same company myself that I have from Seller Central on my merch by Amazon. So I don't think there's any issue. A uh, free tool for Amazon FBA product research. Um, check out AMZ Scout. <laughs> they give you free searches. All right, guys. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Again, you can find me at Ryan Hogue Passive Income on YouTube and at ryansmethod.com. Have a great day.
Hello and welcome to this seminar. Uh, my name is Johnny Bradley and I'm going to be looking at the three Amazon FBA mistakes you want to avoid unless unless you actually want to waste thousands. So if you want to waste thousands, then uh, click off of this. That's fine. That's cool. That's your prerogative. You can do whatever you want. But if you want to make sure that you can save thousands, well, I'm, the, I'm your man. Okay, but let's get into this straight away. My vision for you, for everybody, is to help ordinary people create extraordinary things, just one product at a time. It's something I stand behind, it's something I march behind, and uh, uh, this is something I believe that everyone can do for themselves, right? You can do this one product at a time. You can create something extraordinary if you have the right knowledge. Here's some of my clients. Uh, you know, there they are. They look happy. They've got some awards. That's all good. Um, but really, the important person here is me. I'm the founder of the Seller Pro Academy. Uh, I've been selling on Amazon since 2017. Author of the One Product Strategy. It's around here somewhere. Don't have one to show you. But anyway, oh, they, they've got one in their picture. I've helped thousands of sellers. Uh, and uh, my clients have generated well over £5 million. Well over £5 million. So we, we mainly focus in the UK market, but everything you're going to learn today is applicable to any single market or, or actually any business for that matter. So let's get started. These are the three critical mistakes that if you mess up, if you don't do, you're going to get ruined, right? You're going to get wrecked. Mistake one, only touching the tip of the iceberg. I, iceberg. Cryptic, I know, but <laughs> you know, I've got to make it interesting for you guys. Mistake number two, getting your the wool pulled over your eyes being blindfolded by the truth. And the mistake number three is being a last minute Larry. No one likes a last minute Larry. We want to make sure that we're always on time. So if you get any questions, feel free to reach out to me directly on Instagram at Johnny Bradley UK. Or just feedback if you think this is rubbish. And um, yeah, please tell me, I would like to know. Or book a call with my team. Um, I'm going to give you the details at the end of this presentation, but that is uh, an option. So let's get going. Hopefully you want to get going. I want to get going too. Mistake number one, only touching the tip of the iceberg. Sometimes the tip is all you need, but in this case, we want to go a little bit deeper, right? So this is where I see the biggest and mis most mis misunderstood element of selling on Amazon. You may have even seen it today. And what I'm about to say could potentially go against some of the things that you would hear other people tell you. I think if you questioned them on it, they would probably agree, but at face value, this might be a little bit different. And the reason I'm telling you this is because it, it works, right? Um, I've got nothing against any anyone else. Um, I'm just, this has worked for me. This has worked for my clients. This is replicable. It, it works for us. So uh, I want to show you, you today. So this is going to be your strategy. High demand, low competition. Uh, don't think so. Noob alert, right? This is a typical Amazon FBA beginner strategy and it ends up leading nowhere, right? You find a product with high sales, low reviews, you get it listed on Amazon quickly. As soon as you've done that, you do it again until you're at 10K a month. And uh, you know, this may have worked four years ago, here when I started, um, but there's, there is actually a better way, right? Times are changing, things are evolving. There is a better way. And actually this is a bad way, right? It's a bad way. What you wanna do, what I think you should do, is just get rid of the competition completely, right? We wanna go for high demand or even some demand, you know, okay demand, but we're just going to cross out low competition, okay? Because the problem with this high sales, low competition nonsense is that if something has high sales, think about this logically, it will already, or eventually will have high competition. It makes sense. If there's money in a market, people will try and sell to those customers. Competition. Okay, so if you don't approach it with this in mind, you're going to lose out to someone that did. So if you go into it thinking, oh, I'll just, you know, do any old product and stick a label on it and, and send it in because it's low competition, you're going to get wrecked at some point. You're going to get ruined and overtaken by someone that has thought of it, someone that's watched this and gone, I'm going to do this. Finding a product like this is extremely hard. You might be watching this and you may have already tried product research. You know, like, I can't find a product with high sales and long co low competition. I mean, duh, right? It is hard. I'm going to show you a much quicker method. Now, the example I picked out today took me about three minutes to find. Every other, every, everyone else, right? The majority of people, they look on YouTube and they're plugging in the same data, right? Because they get, they're looking at videos that are years old. They're looking at the same data that you're going to be looking at to find the exact same products. It doesn't make any sense. It's just not going to work. Right? So there's a better idea, better yes idea. Get clear on your what you're looking at before you start. Mm -hmm. Do it one step at a time. Don't worry about your shipping or your 
you know ppc or any of that stuff that's like multiple steps in the future just don't don't worry about any of that stuff right now okay just focus on finding a product first don't spend hours researching this is a big big issue i see people saying oh, i spent four hours researching today like three and a half hours was completely wasted it was just pointless it was it didn't you didn't even need to do it half an hour at a time right max and focus on the customer. I want you to change the way you think about selling on Amazon. And you're, I want you to put the, the customer as the most important godlike thing ever, right? They are your heroes. They are the people that you're doing this for. You're not doing this for yourself. You're doing this for them, okay? As soon as you make that change, your business can change, okay? So you're going to get clear, right? First thing, get clear. Use product research tools like AMZ Scout, Super Seller Fest. Uh, and uh, filter by selling price, okay? Sales, I had to check then, and category only. None of this weight, reviews, keyword, just honestly do this, right? Category. Scroll through the results and pick a few that have good monthly revenue, easy. Think about what has the broadest keyword for that product, easy. Search that on Amazon and then use a Chrome extension uh, to, to view the sales, okay? Now, the only real thing that I'm not doing is looking at reviews. Now, what you're gonna want, right? You're gonna want to find a product that has good sales across the first page, okay? You might probably already know this. I'm, I'm probably teaching you to suck eggs here, but of course this means, for anyone else, uh, this means that there's lots of customers searching and buying this product, cool. Um, if you're on page one, then you could estimate your sales. And that's why we're, we're kind of using these uh, methods and these tools. Find a few products like this, three products, five products, okay? Don't spend more than 30 minutes at a time searching because you're just going to waste your time. So this is it, really simple. This honestly took me about three minutes to find. No joke, about three minutes. And it might be not the most incredible product, but it's three minutes, right? If I spent 30 minutes, I could probably find something a lot better. So let's just zoom into this one category. I picked pet supplies uh, price. I put minimum of 19 pounds because I want to see things that are like 19.99, 19.50, all that sort of stuff. Reviews, woo -woo, blank, not putting that in at all. And sales, I put a minimum of 15,000 per month. Now I made a little bit of a mistake while I was actually doing this. Okay, ooh, here we go. Is I was actually looking at the US marketplace. Now I do a lot of, a lot of stuff on the UK marketplace, but this is all the same. I actually managed to to, to do this by using the US marketplace on here and then going on amazon.co.uk and still finding a product opportunity. So you scroll down, you have a look at all these things. And I found one, a, a pet carrier, cat carrier, like a foldable fabric one. Cool, they make some money, all good. I'm gonna go onto Amazon and I'm gonna get the broadest keyword, pet carrier or pet box, something like that, okay? If you spent longer doing it, you'd probably get a better keyword. You assess the, uh, the, the sales, right? So you open up the Chrome extension, it, pulls out all the data and we have a little look. So, okay, cool. There's some people, 29,000, 19,000, 28,000, 98,000, 23,000. So there's some demand there. There's some good money to be made. I probably don't have the best keyword because there's some gaps here, 30 pounds. I mean, there's some gaps where they, there shouldn't be gaps, um, but it's an indication of demand and sales, right? Awesome. Cool. Write that down. Move on to the next one. You've got a product idea within a few minutes. Done. Okay. The next step is critical though. Absolutely critical. Sorry. And just how much easier is that? just going to put this out there. How much easier is that than what you've been doing before? Much easier, right? This is why my clients find products quicker than most other people can beat people to market, right? The next step is critical. Okay. We find a product with uh, good demand. Cool. We're not going to worry about competition just yet. And we're going to assess the customer needs and then create the complete solution. So you need to focus on the customer. Like I said earlier, you need to focus on the customer. After you've identified those in-demand products, pivot your analysis to understanding the customers, not the data. It's all about the customers, not the data. The more you understand the customer, the better you can understand their needs, the better, you, uh, the, better the solution that you can actually create for them, which means more clicks, more purchases, more reviews, which means more clicks, more purchases, more reviews, which means more clicks, more purchases, more reviews. How do I do that? Mm, tell me, Johnny. The next step is to engage customer empathy. Right, I've had my Cocoa Pots this morning, guys. I'm pretty pumped up. This is where you put yourselves in the shoes of your customers and construct a product and brand that fulfills the needs of the customers with customer-centric, customer-focused attitude for this. This is how you create a best-selling brand. Right, I'm just going to give you an example of this. Okay, so CBD oil, we probably all know what this is. Uh, the potential buying trigger, the, the customer need is, uh, gets an anxious about work on a Monday morning. Okay, I'm just gonna pull one out of thin air. Not that I do that. 
So the potential solution for this would be a guide to perfect, a perfect, perfect Sunday evening routine, right? Or how to use the product well so that you don't have this effect. Well, you could do an extended solution, which is a guide or some sort of education on how to start the day anxiety free. Right, it's a different solution that's solving the need because the, the, the customer may have this issue. They don't really know that they have this issue and they don't know how to use the CBD oil to get rid of this issue. And they don't know it need to, they don't know the other things that they need to do and the other lifestyle changes they need to make to actually get rid of their problem. So the problem is larger than just the product or the, it's, the, the product can't solve the larger problem. So you need to figure out how you're going to do that. Okay. And ultimately don't bundle just for fundle. Okay, the point of creating a solution is to solve customers' needs. So the point of bundling is to solve the needs of the customer. Don't just create a bundle for the sake of creating a bundle. You know, if you analyze the customer needs and realize that, you know, your content needs to be printed, print it, you know, rather than an ebook. If it needs to be video, video it, audio, you know, record it. A community, create it. Make what is relevant for the customer, not for you, right? Don't just do it because other people have done an ebook. Do it because it is, is going to help the customer, okay? Once you've assessed all the potential customer needs, you can come up with potential customer solutions. You pair up the needs, all these customer needs, right? Here they are, customer needs. And you think, okay, well, here's all the solutions that solve those needs in terms of physical, digital products, communities, software, services. And then you create the complete solution, you merge them together, and you just you just make sure that they work really well together, right? And it's going to be pleasurable. Now, you may not use all of your solutions, but the ones you use will best help the customer, right? And it's going to differentiate, differentiate you against the other people, the other sellers. And that's when it becomes easy to stand out because most people on Amazon don't do this. Just look on Amazon yourself. Most people don't do this. Most of the seller, sellers, most of sellers, sellers don't care about their customers. Shock. I mean, they don't, right? They just want to make some money. Once you do, if you do it, you're going to be just positioned in a much better place to stand out and you'll have a more successful business because of it. It's, it's common knowledge. It's common. It's logical that if you care about your customers more, you're going to provide a better service and you're going to have better customers and you're going to have more recommendations, better glowing reviews. It just makes sense. Just like, who is this? Joe. Uh, he's a member of my 100K club. He ran out of stock. Where is this? Where is he? It's, uh, first weekend, he came back into stock. He did 16,000 pounds in sales on a Saturday and Sunday. He implemented the complete solution, right? He's still a year on selling one product. He had empathy for the customer. This is why it worked for him. Emilian, he's actually done well over 1 million pounds in sales from one product. Absolute barbaric effort. Um, it's because he implemented the complete solution. And, and this always comes back to this. Quality, I believe, is more important than quantity. One home run is much better than Steve, uh, than Steve Jobs. One home run is better than Steve Jobs. Okay, that'll do. <laughs> Mistake number two, getting the wool pulled over your eyes. Now, we're going to move away from product research, okay? Move away from product research. One thing that I see a lot is that, you know, you can you can very easily not negotiate, okay? It's, it's easy to not negotiate. So negotiating a price of your product is a minefield. Mistakes can be made a lot, right? If you've tried this, you probably know this. If you want to get the highest, because um, you want to get the highest quality for the lowest price, Makes sense. You want to pay as little as possible for the best possible thing. And many beginners, many, many, many are left paying over the odds, right? Common issues. Uh, you have never negotiated before and you're going to suck at it pretty much. Um, you often put up with a price that's way more than you should be paying because you just don't know. And you never really understand the true value of the product. So the true cost, right? If you're paying 20% more than your competitors, that's 20% more they can afford to spend on marketing and growing their business. And in business, in marketing, he who spends the most wins or they who spend the most wins, right? If I have a bigger profit margin, I can spend more money to acquire, acquire a customer. That means I can get more customers. My BSR can drop. I can get more organic customers. I get more reviews and it just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. So you want the highest profit margin possible. So to get around this, you must find the true cost of your product, okay? So how are you going to do this? After reaching out to a few suppliers, write this down, screenshot it and get initial costs, approach completely new suppliers with the cost already in mind, right? So you've already got a rough idea of the cost and you're going to go to some new suppliers now. Reduce the number. Okay. So you're going to say, Hey, you know, I'll, so you're quoted $5, right? $5 a unit. You're going to go, oh, I'm just, it's $3. Just reduce it, but increase the amount you're willing to order. So originally you're saying, oh, I'm only going to order 200 units, put it up to a thousand. 
pitch this to the new suppliers, wait for their response and see what cost they can reach. See what happens. You'll then start to understand the true cost of the product, the true value of the product. All right, you may have already found that you've been offered the best price, in which case you're all good, move on. Or you may identify that you're paying over the odds. Fantastic, right? You can then you can then approach your previous supplier and give them the quotes that you've been received at a lower cost that you've actually received and negotiate it. Phrase it like this, okay? Write this down, screenshot it. We'd love to work with you and place an order. However, we've got some better quotes elsewhere. Would you be willing to negotiate? Open up the door and just say, would you be willing to negotiate? Don't just ram it down their throat and say, will you take this price or will you give us a cheaper price? Ask permission to negotiate. Okay, don't ask, you don't get. By doing this, you open up the conf uh, the, conf the the conversation in a non-confrontational way. Blimey. You give them an opportunity to win your business so you know they can they want you rather than you want them right you've also created leverage at this point because they now know that they're competing for your business right you have leverage you have something in your on your uh, on your side there um oh we're going on to mistake three okay that makes sense we're moving on mistake three haven't got much time so we better move on Last minute, Larry, this is a big old section. I'm going to slam through this. Many people don't under understand the importance of your Amazon images. A big, big time. They leave it until last minute, right? Which ends up being rushed, sloppy, low quality. They don't test their images and potentially leave thousands on the table in lost income. I've seen this many, many times. So let me ask you a question, right? When you're shopping at Amazon, what do you look at before buying the product? You might look here, you then go here, you go here, and then you go here, and then you go buy it right? Um, it's a lot of images, right? So there's five reasons why customers don't buy. One, it wasn't the right product for their needs. Okay, cool. Reason two, they become impatient as they can't get the information they need. Mm. Reason three, the price isn't right. Reason four, poor quality reviews. And reason five, low number or no reviews, right? These are generally the reasons why someone doesn't buy a product. The real reason is number two, right? The others are easy to overcome. Price, you can change. Reviews, you can change, right? If you're targeting the wrong keywords, you can change that. This is the one that you, that is actually harder to change. Reason two, they become impatient as they can't get the information that they need, right? They've looked at it and they think, ah, I'm not sure this is right for me. I'll swipe back and I'll find someone else. So let's just go through this. I'm going to ask you, why does a picture tell a thousand words, right? It's because of our evolution, okay? Sorry, Jeebus. Our visual system has evolved, right, over a very, very, very long period of time to process images at a lightning fast speed, right? Where written text only appeared, what, uh, around 2,000 years ago, right? So we're programmed to see images. Otherwise, you'd be walking down the road and you wouldn't know everything that's around you. Everything's an image, right? You would be like, oh, what, what, what the hell's going on, right? The brain, the human brain, most brains, deciphers image elements immediately 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 okay and according to research at cambridge university it doesn't matter in which order the letters are the letters in a word are the only important thing is that the first and last letter be at the right place we're reading the the, the image of the word not the actual letters now this works because the human brain is reading the shape of the word right as the brain deciphers the images immediately this is why you can still read when the letters are mixed up it's very very smart very cool we have images that can be used to, can be used to communicate the product right its features and it and, it, and its benefits however many sellers fail to communicate their features efficiently this might be you using too much text and images that don't actually showcase the the full features of the product or the benefit Many approach creating their Amazon images first without understanding how people consume content online, right? You're gonna do that today. Effective design should convey a message and allow anyone to understand it. So this is what I've done in the past. Okay, so if you look on the left-hand side of this screen, you've got a draft image that I created. Um, you know, you've probably seen many images like this. It's just like 16 different features on one image. It's absolute nonsense, right? You can't, you, you won't see anything. Right, you've probably been looking at this for a few seconds and I, if I asked you to name me some features, you'd be like, I don't know. Right, it's nonsense, right? You want to throw one ball at a time, right? One at a time. So you one feature per image, where, wherever possible, one feature per image. Because we love patterns, right? We like things like in threes and ones and threes. That's how we like things most. Like the three musketeers, three wise men, stop, look, listen, sex, drugs, rock and roll. Right? We love music because it's patterns, it repeats. We also see this in art, in science, TV, decor, games, architecture, nature. 
We love patterns. We're programmed to be able to understand it. And we tend to be very uneasy with chaos and chance, right? Here's an example of this. Right, so if I have image one and image two, what would you expect to be next? Probably not this, right? And that's uneasy. It makes me, ooh, I don't like that, right? This is much better, Blah, much better. Where's the logo going to be? Middle, middle, mm, it's not quite right. Nah, uh, it's much better there. The, 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 like it makes sense, right? The problem is, right? The ba main problem is a lot of people put it like this or they put it here or they, they literally do this and think, oh, that's fine. Don't do it. We don't like it. We're humans. We don't like it. Okay. <laughs> This is a really cool one, right? A study done by the University of California found that you're more likely to enjoy a film when you know the ending. Really, really cool. Like you don't go to watch a romantic film and wonder if they're gonna end up together, right? You don't go watch Re Romeo and Juliet thinking, I wonder how it ends. Humans love predictability. Predictability. Hmm. So why should, or why would your Amazon Im images be any different? They should be predictable. They should, we should know the ending right? So what does this mean? On Amazon, your pictures are responsible for your product success, right? I think we can all agree on that. Once you understand how to draw a customer's focus, then you're able to communicate exactly what you intended to. Those that communicate their features and benefits are way more successful. If you can communicate your features and benefits more convincingly uh, than your competition, you're going to make more money than them, right? So last minute, Larry, do not leave this until the last minute. Don't leave your images till the last minute. Start working on it from as soon as you realize this is the product you're going to sell. You know, the more work you put in now, the better your launch is going to be, the better your PPC and the more successful you will be. All right. Oh, let's just look at some, some people that have done this. We've just got a ton of money. All these people are oh, just, just so much money. And look, I could, I'm just going to go on and on and on and on. You know, all of these people implemented these exact same strategies. Oh my God, I've gone too far. Okay. I could have spent a lot longer on that. and I can give you lots of stories, but if you do want my personal help, right, that's the end of this presentation. If you do want it and you're serious, I'm here for you. I've helped my clients generate over 5 million pounds. I can tell you how to replicate this process. All you have to do is jump on with one of my consultants. We normally charge them out at 500 pounds per hour. Um, for example, if you said, Johnny, I want to come and learn uh, how to run my PPC. I'd be like, cool, 500 pounds. So I can get you on one of my consultants. If it was me, a lot more, right? If you said, Johnny, I want to learn how to peel a banana, 500 pounds an hour. Okay. That's just what we do. They're going to give you a clear direction on your next steps. And if it's a good fit for us, we may invite you to, to join our academy. Okay. Just a disclaimer, because I understand a lot of people might do this. We don't accept all calls. We, we cancel about half. There's a short application to get on the phone with us because of course I'm, I'm giving away my team's time. Um, so please give us a lot of information. So we understand that you're serious. You can do that at sellerproacademy.com forward slash apply. Do it. We can help you. Oh, there we go. That's it. So I hope you have enjoyed this seminar. There's a ton and ton and ton of incredible speakers that I really hope you do catch up on or with. Um, if you have any feedback, please do let me know. And remember, you're just one product away. Bye-bye.
Hi, everybody. Um, thank you so much for joining me today, first of all. And thank you so much to AMZ Scout for having me. I'm speaking about one of my very favorite topics today, which is, of course, um, Amazon PPC profitability. So I will go over what I consider to be the fundamentals briefly and then zero in on some action items that you can implement ASAP to improve your account. So first of all, a little bit about me. My name is Zoe and I'm really proud to work for, at Celix, which offers full one-click automation and advisory services for Amazon PPC. So my job is to research and write blog articles, eBooks and social posts that help our community to achieve success on Amazon, mostly through Amazon PPC. So first things first, what does it mean to run profitable PPC campaigns? And what exactly is the relationship between earning profit and what we might consider good ad performance? What is profit? Um, profit is the difference in the amount that you spend and the amount that you earn from selling your product. So no matter where you're selling your product, there are always going to be a number of fixed costs. So on Amazon, they'll look something like these. Um, and then, so what's left over, of course, after shipping, after Amazon fees, of course, after your product cost, is your profit margin. And that's also where your advertising budget is going to come from. So if your goal is to increase sales, you won't necessarily mind spending all of that money on your ads so long as it generates the maximum number of sales. So that's what we would call a break-even ACOS or advertising cost of sales. Um, in this case, the advertising budget is your entire profit margin. So of course, it's also possible to spend more than your profit margin. Um, but when you're spending more than your, I mean, it can make sense in certain situations to spend more than you earn, like if you're launching a new product, for example. Um, but spending anything less than that full amount does mean that there's some profit left over. And of course, uh, how much and which percentage is going to be very specific to your business, but that's the, um, the model that we're speaking about today. So you can think about increasing profit going hand in hand with increasing the efficiency of your advertising strategy. And I will explain why. So here is the Amazon advertising performance funnel. Um, when we're talking about performance, we're basically talking about how effectively your ads move prospective customers down the funnel. So starting with impressions and then clicks and then eventually orders. And of course, how much it's going to cost you to, to make that happen. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what does a more efficient um, ad or structure mean? Well, the essence of efficiency is avoiding waste. So in this particular context, that means making the most of each phase of the customer journey. And your key performance indicators or your KPIs um, tell you how good that your ads are at, at doing that. So basically how efficient they are. So first things first, you want to identify relevant impressions with your um, target keywords and ASINs. Second, you wanna turn those impressions into clicks. That's click through rate and um, how much you're paying for them. That's CPC or cost per click. And ultimately turning those clicks into sales. That of course is measured by your conversion rate. And finally, summarizing the return on investment of this process is your advertising cost of sales or your ACOS, which again is how much you spend on advertising for every dollar that you earn through ad sales. So 
So if profitability is your goal, then it makes sense when you're evaluating your performance to start with a really basic question. So that question is, are my ads profitable? Um, as we talked about, this is relatively simple to answer because you actually don't need any information outside your own account to answer that question. So if your ACoS is lower than your profit margin and there's profit left over and you are spending less than you're earning on ads, yes, your ads are profitable. But if the answer is yes, that your ads are profitable, you'll probably want to know pretty quickly, I mean, you'll have a follow-up question, which is how can I do even better? How can I earn um, more profit? Where, as in which KPIs, is there room for improvement and where is there hid potential? And this is kind of the age-old advertiser's question. So, you know, my ad performance is okay, but is it actually good? And more importantly, can it be better and how? On the other hand, if your answer is no and your ads aren't profitable, then you know that somewhere there's a breakdown in your performance funnel, meaning that um, your KPIs need improvement. But to know which ones and by how much is not really possible just looking inside of your own account and your own performance. So basically, regardless of whether or not your ads are profitable, if you want to improve your performance as far as profit goes, you'll want to ask a second follow up question, which is, is there more profit potential for me and where in which areas can I improve to to make those uh, incremental changes. So we all know in the simplest of terms, you basically want your CPC and your ACoS to be low. You want your conversion rate and your click-through rate to be high. But what's the difference between an okay, a good and a great KPI or metric? Um, of course, no matter what you do, you're never going to achieve a 100% conversion rate. So, um, but when you're working backwards, it's not really crystal clear what an established, uh, how, sorry, how to establish a realistic goal for what a good conversion rate might be for you. You just need more information. So what you need to know is what's a good CPC? What's a good click-through rate? What's a good conversion rate? And of course, what's a good ACoS? Very common question in the Amazon community. The short and sometimes frustrating answer is that, of course, this, it depends very much. And the reason is um, for a performance benchmark to be helpful, it has to be very specific, by which I mean you can't, you can't really just Google it. So um, you don't want to compare your ad KPIs to Google ads going to your proprietary website. That's, that's just not going to be the same. And you, you also don't want to compare them to other marketplaces either, um, like Walmart. It's just a different experience. I mean, for one thing, I can tell you that the median conversion rate on amazon.com is around 8%. So that could be a good benchmark. That could be a good place to start. Um, at least you have you know, the marketplace down, you have Amazon, you have USA. However, uh, amazon.com has quite a wide selection and purchasing behavior is going to be very different depending on the product that you're selling. We don't buy peanut butter the same way that we buy a new pair of jeans. So products like peanut butter and laundry detergent convert at three times the rate of products like clothing. So that's just not a very helpful uh, comparison. We've got apples and oranges here. And um, finally, when you're at the stage of your Amazon journey, we're using multiple ad formats, which I would highly recommend then you'll want to evaluate those KPIs separately too. Um, so sponsored products, sponsored brands, and sponsored display. Those ad formats just don't all perform in the same way, and that's because they're simply not meant to. So um, 
just as an aside, I know from the data that probably about three quarters of you are exclusively using sponsored products, uh, but you should know that in some cases, the best performing sponsored brands actually have better performance than the best performing sponsored products. So um, by that, I mean, they have a lower A cost, they have a higher click through rate. And this trend is actually exaggerated for products that, um, that tend to benefit from rich content. Um, or content that people like to say browse for or like to do a lot of research on, like say for example, electronics, toys and, um, and clothing. I, I digress, but just suffice to say it's worth looking into um, investigating a variety of, of Amazon ad formats, not just sponsored products. So, um, the point is, what you need is an accurate benchmark against which to measure your performance. Uh, you want to compare yourself to your true competitors. So as I was saying, that means competitors who are specific to Amazon, also in your subcategory, and also sharing the same ad format that you happen to be using. And that's why we at Celix developed the Celix Benchmarker Beta made exclusively for Amazon PPC, providing you the most accurate KPI benchmarks in the industry. You can sign up for this tool for free. You'll get a monthly report that summarizes your Amazon PPC performance at the account level and also by individual ASIN. So one way to use the insights from the Celix Benchmarker beta is to identify the areas of greatest growth potential and um, use that to basically establish a realistic goal for yourself for improving those KPIs. So that will tell you where to direct your immediate focus so that you can start improving your overall performance and profitability quickly. So if my conversion rate is in the top 10% compared to my closest competitors, I don't necessarily want to spend my um, immediate future investing in activities that would improve my conversion rate. Um, for example, trying to optimize an already super stellar landing page. If I learn, uh, for example, that it's actually my click-through rate that is way below my competitors, then that's where I'm going to want to focus my efforts in the immediate future to make meaningful progress ASAP. So now that you have uh, used the Celix Benchmarker to accurately assess your performance and um, narrow down your areas of focus, the next thing you're going to want to do is implement some strategic changes based on those insights. Uh, so today I'm gonna be focusing on the changes that you can implement immediately that I think are likely to have the most impact. <clears throat> So quick disclaimer here, as a marketing professional, I don't usually use the word bad. Um, it's more about growth potential, but it is just slightly more concise than below the benchmark. So we'll go with it, but, but just know that I just mean below the benchmark. So if your click-through rate is bad or below the benchmark, according to the Celix benchmarker, then um, it could be two main issues. So either your ads have not found the right audience, the right shoppers, or you are reaching the correct audience, but your ad is not compelling enough to win that click. So how can we fix that? First things first, you do wanna make sure that your ad is being shown to shoppers who are looking for your product. <laughs> um, so, and you can do that. You can do that by eliminating relevant targets. If you're selling a wooden sled, for example, you might find related, but for the purposes of purchasing your product, totally irrelevant keywords in your search term report. Of course, depending on what uh, match settings that you're using. For example, if you're selling this beautiful wooden sled, um, you might find things like sled harness or sled for children, or even something like sled earrings. And you'll want to add those search terms to negative exact because 
they're unlikely to result in a click on your ad. Regarding your content, your ad content, it's also possible that you are reaching the right audience. So they're looking for a product like yours, but they decide not to click on your ad because it's just not compelling enough. Um, so regarding the ad content, look first to the image quality and to the product title. So are they accurate? Are they clear? Do they present your product in the best possible light? Um, and the cool thing about evaluating this is you can actually look at your own products for guidance. So when you're using the benchmarker, you can sort by your products which do have the highest CTR and see if there's any insights that you can glean from those products that you can use to apply to your weaker click-through rate products. And, um, and as I said, image is gonna be a very impactful factor here. As a quick advanced tip, um, you can always run A-B tests. So I think that A-B testing is especially relevant for ads like sponsored brands that have many elements that you can test. So for example, you can test your headlines, you can test the uh, images, and in the case of product collection ads, you can even um, test the products and both the product order. But always remember that for a true A-B test, you, you can only change one element at a time to really judge which is um, the better performer. Sorry. Um, your CPC. Sorry about that, <laughs> one second. Okay, let's talk about your uh, conversion rate. So why aren't shoppers who've clicked on your ad interested in buying your product? So similar to um, click-through rate, it could either be a relevance issue or a content quality issue. So um, maybe your landing page is not very compelling or there could be a disconnect between what users are expecting to find on your landing page and what the, the ad that they've clicked on. So first thing, you wanna make sure that your ad listing and product are all telling a consistent story and that your product is depicted accurately. So you never wanna increase clicks, of course, at the cost of conversions because all that will do is waste your budget. So you don't want to lure anyone with a very attractive ad and then end up on a landing page where um, they're seeing something that's incongruent with what they felt that they were clicking on, of course. You also never want to have conversions at the cost of um, presenting your product inaccurately because that's likely to earn you some negative reviews later on, which will, of course, come back to bite you later on and decrease your conversion rate. Um, so aside from accuracy and telling a consistent story with those three elements agreeing with each other, you also can optimize your content to make your landing page a little bit more appealing and conversion, basically close the sale convert, um, encourage users to make that, to make that final purchase. So for optimization, again, same with click-through rate, I think images are definitely the lowest hanging fruit here for increasing your content quality. So more is more. Make sure you have as many high quality images as possible. Consider adding lifestyle images, educational images, images that um, inspire your shoppers, basically. Of course, you also wanna make good use of the bullet points and any written copy that you have. You also want to monitor that Q&A very closely. Um, and as for an advanced tip, Amazon seems to, in general, be encouraging brands now more than ever to engage in full funnel marketing, meaning more brand marketing outside of strictly selling. And I think it's worthwhile to take their cue on this one and basically invest in as many of the free content boosting opportunities as possible. 
So um, especially if you already have the in-house resources to create this content, to take these beautiful photos, lifestyle photos um, and educational content, like I said, A plus content is a great idea. Um, and as far as rich content goes, there's also brand stores, Amazon posts, product videos, you know, just, just to name a few. Really encourage you to, to dive in there and see what you can do. ACOS. So you want to consider ACOS basically your canary in the coal mine. So your ACOS is an indication that the sales funnel, if you have a poor score, a bad score, below the benchmark score for ACOS, um, something's up with your sales funnel. Your ads just aren't working as efficiently as they could be. The best way to influence your ACOS is to improve your other KPIs. So increase your CTR, increase your conversion rate, and calibrate your CPC properly. That being said, if you really want to improve your ACOS, a quick way to do that, <clears throat> basically a quick way to eliminate waste in your campaigns and increase efficiency is to audit your targets. So specifically look out for keywords in your broad match and category campaigns that are generating clicks, but no conversions, and then um, add those as negative targets. So a good rule of thumb that we like to suggest is between 10 and 20 clicks before you make a judgment call about whether or not to add them as negative after having not converted. So 10 to 20 clicks, no conversions, say goodbye. Um, and for the sort of advanced tip, for longer term results, the best thing you can do is set up a campaign structure that is designed to continually optimize your targets. So we have outlined how to do this in our ebook, Amazon PPC, the ultimate guide. And that's gonna be your best sort of long-term solution. So in summary, how can you make your ads more profitable ASAP? Number one, understand profit, done. <laughs> Number two, benchmark your account to identify growth potential areas. And three, you're going to use that report to implement strategic changes to your account right away that will increase your profitability. And you can keep going. So just repeat steps through two and three um, to infinity and beyond. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to personally invite you to get started now by benchmarking your Amazon PPC account. You will receive your free report by email. You can use the QR code here or the URL to access the most powerful Amazon PPC evaluation tool in the industry for free. In case you can't tell, I'm very, very proud of this tool. Super helpful, really awesome tool. Um, so beyond just benchmarks, your full report will include a convenient account summary that allows you to toggle between your performance against benchmarks and um, your own performance over time. So you can look at your performance compared to your competitors, but then also compared to your own performance, so your month over month performance. Um, you will receive individual ASIN analysis, um, which is a detailed table that you can actually sort by each individual KPI. And it's going to give you either a red, yellow, or green score for each product and each KPI. Um, the other super interesting thing that you'll find that we do get a lot of questions about is the account structure audit. So that's going to compare how your ad account is structured compared to what our recommended account structure setup is. Um, Another feature, which I also touched on a little bit earlier, is you can do an ad format investment assessment. So for example, are your competitors investing in sponsored brands? Well, you are not. Um, are you investing more than they are? To the contrary, um, knowing that kind of thing can definitely give you, give you that, that edge over your competitors. In addition to all that, 
lots of great content, um, so many helpful resources about how to improve those KPIs now that you know where you stand, an extensive FAQ, instructional videos, articles, and a collection of eBooks. Um, I think one of the coolest things about the report is that you can really choose your own adventure depending on how much time you have and um, what your level of interest is as far as these numbers go. So if you're a super analytical person like myself, you'll probably want to dive into the details of every single product and every single KPI, but you can also use the monthly report to just very quickly check in on your account performance in the past month. Um, so at the top of the report, you'll see your overall score. That's going to be a platinum, gold, silver, or bronze, and your best and worst performing KPIs. And then you can, like I said, toggle between your uh, month over month performance and the benchmarks. So maybe you're a platinum score PPC user, but maybe in the month of September, you'll see that you had a great month compared to your competitors and the benchmarks. But as far as your own performance goes, you didn't perform quite as well as August. So that's going to be meaningful and relevant information to you to have when you're making decisions about your account. So many different lenses through which to evaluate your account, but all made really simple and digestible for you to take in. Again, the report is crafted to help you take action and quickly improve your performance. So highly recommend that you do that. You can use, of course, the QR code. You can also uh, follow the link. And um, finally, I have a couple of parting gifts. So in your event package, you will find a special offer from Celex for four months of advisory or managed services for the price of three. So Q4 is a really great time to consider an investment in stepping up your ad game on Amazon. Um, some quick facts about Q4, just a reminder that ad revenue is likely to increase by 100% on Black Friday, probably up to 160% on Cyber Monday, and between the 4th and the 20th of December is likely to overall be 90% higher than any other calendar month and up to 113% higher during um, some of those mid-month shopping days compared to the average month's revenue. <laughs> that was a lot of percentages, but the, um, the overall message is that ad sales will be up, of course, as you know. So really good time to uh, brush up your account and get it where you'd like to be in advance. Um, also, that is not just for uh, deals or deal days, that's just overall ad revenue. So as you well know, huge earning potential there and you wanna set yourself up for success as much as possible leading up to those events. Regarding the services that are on offer, we have two options. So we have the Celix Advertising Advisor, and that is the Celix software platform plus coaching sessions with our in-house PPC experts to increase your advertising performance using our software. Um, so this one makes sense for sellers who are confident in managing their own campaigns, but want competitive insights, uh, flexible uh, PPC automation and some personal advice. The second option is a little bit more hands-on. That is the Celix managed services option. So that's when our in-house PPC experts manage your Amazon advertising campaigns for you. So this is ideal for sellers that don't have the time or don't necessarily have the um, the knowledge or the interest in running their own campaigns and really want that hands-on PPC management experience, campaign setup and ongoing PPC um, optimization. So you will wanna take advantage of this limited time offer to make sure that you can uh, achieve your wildest holiday target uh, dreams. So I definitely encourage you to check that out.
You'll also find um, in your AMC scope package, you will find our most read, shared, and absolutely cherished ebook, which is the ultimate guide to Amazon PPC. So it is chock full of information about how to improve your overall account and KPIs, suitable for absolute beginners, and I think also can be insightful for uh, advanced users as well. So in this complete guide, you'll learn how Amazon PPC ads work, what the different ad types are, how to organize your first campaigns. Um, more specifically, all of the essential terminology is there, um, definitions of the key performance indicators, uh, how to start and optimize your first campaigns and an updated 2021 beginner strategy blueprint. Finally, I just really wanted to thank you all for spending the time with me today. Um, if you'd like to stay in touch with me and with Celix and be the first to know when we publish fresh content, I would suggest that you follow us on Facebook. If you want more information about every single topic that I discussed today, including advanced ad strategy, how to use the benchmarker, then also please do, I encourage you to head on over to the Celix blog. Um, I really look forward to seeing you there. Thank you so much. Hello everyone, my name is Carly and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with everyone and start my session on ShipBob in our two-day express and how you can offer that. Perfect. So like I said, um, I'm going to be talking about how you can offer two-day shipping across every channel in Q4. Um, first things first, my name is Carly Doddell. I am on the partnerships team here at ShipBob. I've been with the company for about four years. And my fun fact is always I was our third female hire. Um, I started with the company when we were pretty small and now we're at around 120 people. Cool. So what is ShipBob? I think that's a really good place to start. So ShipBob is a global logistics platform that fulfills e-commerce orders for direct to consumer brands. We have 25 global fulfillment centers. We have a full customization suite. We are a carbon neutral fulfillment company we have 100% coverage for two-day delivery across the U.S., and we have 30 direct integrations. Um, we have fulfillment centers in U.S., Canada, Ireland, Australia, and London. Um, so obviously, choosing a 3PL is a pretty big decision, and it's definitely not um, for everyone. Typically, we work best with brands that are primarily doing around 400 shipments per month. That's just one we've seen in the industry that it makes sense to utilize a partner like ShipBob. So how does it work? Um, I'm going to start with the basics. So ShipBob um, connects to basically all major e-commerce platforms, Shopify, BigCommerce, WooCommerce, um, Amazon, and then I'm just going to minimize this. Cool. <laughs> and then um, we connect to your e-commerce platform. You can send us your physical inventory and then anytime an order is placed, essentially we pull that in from your e-commerce store. We have your physical inventory in our fulfillment centers, and then we pick, pack, and ship it out. Oops. 
So just to close this up, essentially how you can think of Shabab is we are the Amazon-like shipping provider for e-commerce brands. So what I'm going to talk to you guys about today is how to unlock today on all major platforms, achieve 100% coverage across the U.S., lower two-day shipping costs, increase conversions, AOV, and retention, maintain a branded end-to-end -end experience. So why is offering two-day important? So I'm just going to touch on these couple of points on why uh, what we have found um, that has made two-day successful and, and why you should offer two-day as a brand. So it encourages repeat purchases by meeting expectations with fast on-time delivery. I think there's nothing worse than when you get a package and it's super late and you check that tracking page and it keeps getting delayed and delayed. Oftentimes a um, consumer is not going to go back to that e-commerce brand and buy again. It converts more shoppers by offering two-day shipping to reduce cart abandonment. So essentially what we've seen merchants do is offer something like a uh, two-day in their checking cart or even just something like free shipping. And they've seen their abandoned cart um, decrease when they offer those two options. And then it entices shoppers to spend more to unlock free two-day shipping by using spend thresholds greater than their current AOV. I think this is something really smart um, that we see brands do. Essentially, they will say, hey, spend $100 and get free two-day shipping or spend $200 and get free two-day shipping. Um, and then a really important stat that I like to point out that like always blows my mind and I'm not sure why, but 67% of shoppers expect two-day delivery. I think that this just like goes to show that Amazon has just really set the standard in our head that we should have everything in two days. And um, yeah, they've just really leveled the bar. And I think if you don't offer two-day, oftentimes you're going to be less competitive. Merchants are going to look at your competitor's website to see if they can get it in two days. Cool. So this is the past um, about two-day. You know, it had a lot of limitations. Two-day had a lot of weight restrictions, um, limited by certain zip codes, and then badging was unavailable. Our ShipBob's two-day program now, it's available on all of our platforms that we support. Um, we have no weight restrictions. We're averaging at around a 95% on-time performance. We have 100% coverage across the continental US, even just using one fulfillment center. And of course we have badging now, um, which I'm gonna get into badging and, and really what that means, but essentially like how you can think of badging, it's that little mark when you, you know, search a product on Google that says two day shipping, um, or you're on something like a Walmart, for instance. Cool, so how do I, if I'm doing a good job, you should be thinking, okay, cool, Carly, how do I unlock two day? Um, so the first step of unlocking two-day shipping is working with a 3PL that can support it and one that integrates with your sales channel. So I think it's super important to find a fulfillment center that directly integrates with your sales channel. Um, and then another key thing to look at is to make sure that the fulfillment center you're using has more than one location. This is going to be key in lowering the cost of your um, postage. And so that's like two big things I always like tell merchants, whether whether they're using, you know, a ship up or just evaluating and looking, you know, seeking advice is always find a fulfillment center that directly integrates with all of your platforms and has multiple fulfillment centers. So with ShipBob, you have the ability to achieve 100% two-day shipping coverage across the continental U.S. for every platform we integrate with. Lowering costs. So two-day can be expensive. It's a premium service and oftentimes it comes with a premium price tag. Um, so I wanna talk about ways that merchants can use two-day but still at a cost affordable rate. Um, so how you can do this is using ground services, um, including regional carriers alongside UPS two-day air um, which allows merchants to offer two-day delivery for less money than expedited shipping. Um, and you can, you know, you should do this 
alongside of distributing your inventory, which I'm going to get to in the next slide. But essentially, if you look at this picture, if you have you know, locations in multiple regions of the United States, you're basically able to send everything in ground shipping, which is going to decrease that instead of paying that premium price tag for two day. So getting into distributing inventory, um, essentially with ShipUp, you don't have to utilize you know, 17, 15 fulfillment centers. You can utilize one fulfillment center. And essentially what we'll do is at the point of checkout, we will say when they type in their address and their zip code, if they're eligible for two day, two day will populate in their checkout. If they're not eligible for two day, it will not. However, with that being said, if you have more than one fulfillment center, your reach is going to stretch. You're going to be able to allow to, you're going to be able to have two day more readily available for your merchants. Um, and it's going to decrease the cost because you're using ground shipping. So I'm actually going to show a map, which I think depicts this great and a lot better than I'm probably saying. So this is a merchant that has one fulfillment center in California, right? Um, you can see it right in here. It's, it's this red. So red is, you know, you know, one day shipping or two days. It's when you get to the purple, that's probably around like five, five business days of shipping. So this is just utilizing one fulfillment center. Now, when you're utilizing three fulfillment centers, you basically can see that that purple is not on the map at all right? Yes, it is on the map. Alaska is purple, but I think if, you know, you're there, you're, you're kind of used to getting um, your orders later, but pretty much all the continental U.S. you'll be able to cover with pretty much only three fulfillment centers, um, which is obviously really great because it's then going to decrease your postage um, and you can really turn your shipping into a revenue driving source for yourself. Cool. So this is one of my favorite brands of ours, um, Touchland. They're essentially a hand sanitizer with amazing scents. They actually get their scents made in Paris. And I don't know about anyone else, but it's COVID times. And I was stocking up on hand sanitizer that was drying my skin out and cracking my skin and just horrible things. Um, and I finally found Touchland and it definitely doesn't do that. Um, it's a really great hand sanitizer and this is not a plug or I'm not sponsored to say this. I just really love their hand sanitizer and I, I think it's a really great product, but, um, they're a big believer of our two day program. They seen just such great success with it. So I just wanted to, um, read a quote from Andrea, the founder. Um, so she says, ship app has been a great ally as they, as they have fulfillment centers all over the U.S. facilitating in two to three day delivery time for any customer in the U.S. This is helpful, especially for when weather challenges happen. Being able to have different locations to ship from allows for a more seamless supply chain. And I think she says it better than I can communicate it. She utilizes two day. She has about five fulfillment centers and she I would say majority of her orders go two day shipping. And then of course, whenever there's weather challenges, instead of like, so say she's in the Midwest and the Midwest gets hit with a huge snowstorm, pretty much all of her orders then will go out from different fulfillment centers. So it doesn't limit her at all if you know there's carriers that are behind or anything like that. We'll just automatically route her orders from the next fulfillment center. Cool, so meeting customer expectations. Um, I kind of talked about this in a previous slide, um, but like I said, everyone kind of just expects prime like shipping. And I think if you're not offering today, it really limits you. And oftentimes merchants are going to go look at your competitor or go straight to Amazon or in, and look for something that offers two day shipping um, and go ahead and go with, with that brand. Um, fun fact, 40% of online shoppers who abandon their carts do so because of shipping and handling costs. So it's just really, I think, important to partner yourself with a 3PL that can support 
two-day um, just so you can be competitive. Two-day badging. So I kind of chatted about this previously, um, but this is obviously super important. Um, you need two-day badging to optimize for conversion by showcasing two-day delivery everywhere you sell, right? So essentially, like, I have a little screenshot right here. Um, this is one of our clients' backblade. It's not the sexiest product. It's a men's back shaver. Um, like I said, not the sexiest product. Um, but essentially, what they do is they sell on, I believe they sell on Amazon, they sell on Shopify, they sell on Walmart. And essentially, they utilize um, our two-day badging program with Walmart. And it's just that little free two-day delivery that pops up um, that is a Walmart program that we are in um, that allows a merchant to ship two days. This is obviously huge for merchants. Um, I think Mike, or I'm sorry, I think Mark puts it best. That's his name um, from Backblade. He says, We've seen a spike in conversion since applying for ShipBob's two-day express, which lets us stay ahead of the competition. Um, and like I said, two-day doesn't have to be this premium price tag, this really expensive thing. You can offer it for a, a cost affordable rate, um, and it's really going to boost your, your conversion and your decrease your shopping cart abandonment. Cool. So increase AOV with free two-day shipping thresholds. Um, this is I Love Plum. This is hands down the cutest um, tutu line for kids. I actually bought my niece one of these and hands down adorable. If you guys are, are looking for holiday gifts for kids, I definitely recommend checking them out. Um, but so they use our two-day program and this is just a wild story. They're, they're one of our most successful merchants to utilize two-day. Um, so they said ShipBob's two-day express shipping has increased our AOV by 97% from 75 to 148. And we were able to scale our business from 300,000 in sales per year to over a million, a 20, uh, 267 increase due to ShipBob's infrastructure, technology, and scalability. And essentially how I Love Plum, that's the name of them, they use us, is they are in... I believe it is six fulfillment centers now. And essentially they are obviously whenever an order comes in, we're shipping it from the closest fulfillment center to that end customer and everything is going ground. They also are one of the merchants that has spend 200 and get free two day shipping. Um, and that has obviously worked really well from them. They've been able to scale their business to, to a million plus business now. Um, and I think that they are just a great example of how you can utilize ShipBob's two-day program and just overall what, what two-day shipping does for you when it's in your checkout and having that as a cost affordable option. Um, and like I keep saying, it's, it's really what merchants expect. And I think that's, that's like what you need to do to be competitive. Awesome. So brand loyalty, um, providing fast and easy fulfillment encourages customers to share their experience with their friends and family. I always say this stat, um, but your box is the only thing that's going to get a hundred percent open rate, right? Like your email might not open, but your box, like someone ordered that and it's going to be get, it's going to get opened. Um, so you want to make sure it, it looks good. It has your product's brand and feel. Um, and so I, I wanted to share Tracy, um, founder of Dora Sleep. Um, an, in, in, an influencer posted about his experience purchasing from Dora Sleep, left a raving review of, about the checkout experience and how after ordering, he had already received an email saying his order had shipped. If I was fulfilling orders myself, it would have never, it would it would have taken me much longer. So to give you guys background, Tracy was fulfilling her orders herself. She had super long times SLAs of getting orders out and she was just using standard ground shipping from Texas. Um, and when she came on with ShipBob, she actually just put her or her inventory into fulfillment centers and then was able to have a quicker SLA of getting orders out and they were getting to her end customer 
faster, which was leaving a better brand experience for her merchants. Awesome. So this is one that I think people forget a lot is unboxing, right? Like I said, your box is going to get 100% open. Um, so make sure, you know, what you're putting in front of the merchant matters. Um, from branded boxes to free samples, here are a few ways to be compliant with two-day shipping and make a great first impress impression. So I think that having a custom box really is an experience. You're opening up, it's unique. Um, you're able to put free samples in there. Maybe you're even adding a like thank you card with a 10% off um, the next time you shop with this brand. So I think unboxing is definitely something that maybe gets forgotten, but I think it really enhances the experience of two day, right? You're getting your order in two day. It's coming in this awesome box and it's coming with some inserts and some samples. And to me, that's just a really great experience. And then I think this is a cool uh, stat. 40% of shoppers will share a product image on social if it comes in a branded packaging. So obviously great publicity for your brand as well. Awesome. So um, I did wanna recap everything for you guys and tell you about an offer that ShipBob has. Um, so just to recap, cap, um, you can unlock two-day shipping. It's not, it's not extremely hard. ShipBob makes it very easy. We have 100% coverage of the continental US. We can help make it less expensive for you. We can help increase your AOV, build loyalty. And then of course, we can help you with having that branded boxing experience. So a special offer um, is get $1,000 in free shipping credits. We'll also cover the freight cost to move your inventory to our warehouse. And this is the link that you can go ahead and click on for that. But $1,000 in free shipping credits and we will pay for your freight cost is huge. We've honestly never done this before. So um, I think that this is just amazing offer. Q4 is, is here. Shipping and logistics is about to get crazy. And I think just setting up your fulfillment and your infrastructure now will definitely pay off in the holidays. And being able to delight your customers with offering today um, is going to be huge, especially for those late time shoppers like myself. Um, I always am ordering everything last minute and exclusively buy from brands that offer two day shipping. So I definitely think that if you're, you're interested in, in delighting your, your customers, definitely chat with me. And of course, a thousand dollars helps. And then we do um, are offering these eBooks for free, um, which we don't normally do as well. Um, and these are amazing insights from all of our top merchants about how they prepare for the holidays, how they offer two-day shipping, how they you know, increase their AOV, things and tips and tricks that they've done um, are all in these eBooks. They're amazing. We take a lot of time to write these and they're all based off of our customers and, and really what they're doing. So it will really have great data insight for you. And if you have any questions, um, you can contact me. My email is kdaudel at shipbob.com. I'm, I'm happy to be a resource if you want to talk about how you can offer today or just have overall questions on logistics. I'm always happy to be a resource. Thank you.